working? Yeah, all right. All right, we're good. How's everybody doing right now? All right. Teeping Tom says, what if he actually never shows up one day? Remember, that has never happened. I want, I feel like I should get some degree of credit for that. That has never happened. I've always shown up. <laughs> I'm too early? I could, I could take another minute. I could take another few minutes. <laughs> if, you, if you would like. Uh, let's get the stream likes up to 100 real quick. No, I did not get hit by a car. No, nothing crazy has happened. Nothing crazy has happened. In fact, it's been a pretty relaxing day, I think. Um, don't know why, it just has. Uh, oh, I didn't go to the gym today. So, maybe that <laughs> that makes it a bit more relaxing. Um, also, uh, I am traveling this next week to Malaysia. And then I'll be in Malaysia for two weeks or a week and a half or something like that. Um, we will still do streams there. We will still do streams there. Did I mention I'm going to Malaysia? I don't think I mentioned I'm going to Malaysia. Uh, <laughs> what made me leave the red-haired pirates? Did you finally buy the milk? What? <laughs> it's part of the red-haired pirates. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to be gone from this Friday to f the 15th through, yeah, I'm gone for two weeks, basically. But we'll still do streams. I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a chapter. Does anybody know if there's a chapter coming out for the rest of the year? Does anybody know? Have we already had our last chapter? You guys know that usually December, January, and it always changes which days are which. There's just this stretch where there's no chapters whatsoever for like two weeks. I think one year, it was like three weeks. I don't know why it was. Breezy2x, thanks for the two. Morge, who was the strongest guy at Marine Ford? Uh, that's a cool question, or a good question. Uh, I, I'm i still inclined to say, like, uh, I'm still inclined to say, you know, this is one of those where I think we just got to wait and see. I think we just got to wait and see. It, it's really fucking hard to say right now. I think at that point in time, I, I kind of defer to how Oda was portraying things at that point in time. Because that's when the readers are in the full flow of the story. You know, like, now we kind of look back at Marine Ford and we kind of... You know, you kind of just go by, like, your memory of certain incidents. But while the story is going on, there's lots of subtleties in how things are being done. Um, general flow, small bits of dialogue, etc. that give you a lot more additional context as to what it feels like the author is trying to do there and i just remember during marine ford it did feel like oda is still trying to imply that right now at at the marine ford battle between the whitebeard pirate side and the marine side it still felt like whitebeard himself was the uh you know the biggest dog there like it still felt like it was being built like being push that Whitebeard's still that guy it's just this is this is the moment that it finally stops <laughs> this is the moment that the status quo basically changes right but at the start of the battle right I got the sense that basically everything is building up to suggest that Whitebeard is still to be viewed as the dude right um and I think if you go back and look at people's power scale like this is one of the things I remember from back then like i would go to naruto forums which was probably the most popular anime forum debate place at that point in time like it wasn't just for naruto it was for a wide variety of series it was just called naruto forums right if you go there or just general anime forums you would generally see post marine forward everyone having white beard still number one it's only been in much more recent years and i think that this is just due to people kind of forgetting what it was like during marine forward and just like People just remembering the heart attacks, basically, and not remembering all the badass shit that Whitebeard was doing and the way people were still talking about him. Um, and just small bits of dialogue, small bits of, like, inner monologues and things like that from various characters. Uh, if you really go back and read the storyline of Marine Ford from chapter, like, 500 all the way through 
the conclusion of Marine Ford, it does feel like <clears throat> Whitebeard is still supposed to be that guy. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think it's it's it was still probably Whitebeard, I think, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if like it like based on we ju- what we just saw from Garp, what old Garp did, I would put him like pretty close to old Whitebeard at Marine Ford, like probably neck and neck. It's possible Mihawk. Uh, if I'm looking at characters just on the Whitebeard Pirate side and uh, Marine side, I'd say maybe Mihawk was there. We, we need to wait and see with Mihawk, I think, just to know. Um, yeah, but right now, I think the safest bet is just go with what we were told at the time and say Whitebeard. Oh, for bringing up Shanks, I wasn't even including Shanks. Shanks showed up later. I, I don't know, man. Um... I think the I, I think for whatever reason the Shanks Mihawks the the Shanks Mihawk debates have gotten they've just been popping up more lately for no real reason neither of those characters have done anything in a minute and then uh, uh, well Mihawk has technically never done anything ever but I, I don't know why it's popping up more now maybe because the anime just hit the point where we just found out about um, like we got that quote about Mihawk sword skill etc um, yeah I don't know. Uh, I think it's, at least on Twitter, what I've been seeing is, like, some people even arguing that Mihawk is stronger than, like, prime Whitebeard and Roger, which is just, I don't even know what to say at that point. Because we all know what it is, right? It's not really that people are this, like, (laughs) excited about Mihawk himself. Mihawk's obviously a cool character, and I like Mihawk quite a bit. But we all know the real agenda here is basically Zoro, right? The real agenda is... We know that Zoro's final strength level, right, wherever he ends up, is going to be a little bit above Mihawk, right, at the very least, right? Uh, Mihawk's going to be his last fight, maybe second to last fight, something like that, right? Um, we all know that Zoro surpasses Mihawk at the end of the story. So the higher you build up whatever Mihawk's supposed level is, basically like, you know what? He was even stronger than Prime Roger. He was even stronger than Prime Whitebeard. Yeah, Mihawk. No one ever mentions it, but the strongest pirate in history. <laughs> Funny how that's never come up in his title. Um, but that's what, that's what they build it up as, right? Now that it's getting to that point, it's just like, you can't even take it seriously anymore. So it's just, uh, I don't know. It's not worth discussing. Michael Kerr, thanks for the five. Got an aerospace final tomorrow morning. Should I try the couple minutes of sleep strat? I feel like I died driving to class. Don't do the couple minutes of street, uh, sleep strategy. Um, my, uh, the friend of mine that got married recently... He is an aerospace engineer. He was one of my roommates in college. He is an aerospace engineer, um, works at Northrop Grumman now, um, and he studied a lot. And he, uh, you know, he did uh, he did his homework and all that shit. So do that. Do the correct habits uh, because that seems to have worked out better for him that way. I think that the my strategy works only for humanities majors. I don't know if it works the other way. Actually, no. I was able to do it for uh like bio and stuff like that but i didn't really that was wasn't like high school oh let's get the stream likes up to 100 real quick pat galley says mr musty 100 percent just woke up from a nap i did take a nap today but i didn't just wake up from a nap didn't just wake up but yeah i did take a nap earlier uh jake jones thanks for being a yawn coach here member for nine months vod watcher here was giggling like a fool at work every time you mentioned strapping bombs to things or drinking devil fruit smoothies lol keep it up oh yeah the, who watched last week's stream last week's stream was great last week's stream was a. Uh... <laughs> no was it last week's stream or was it last mo- last monday had or last week had two great streams it had the uh if you if you have not seen this one already i i strongly recommend you guys go watch it Go watch last Monday's How I Would Kill Every Straw Hat. I think that that is one of the all-time great streams ever, in my unbiased opinion. I mean, I'm biased all towards all my streams, so I think that you can take that. If I'm saying that's maybe one of the best streams ever, period, I think it should account for something, right? It should hold some weight. So I definitely recommend watching that. And we have some good discussion about gorillas and uh, human-giant uh, mating interactions in last week's chapter... 11,001 discussion stream. Um, not 11,000, whatever. 1,101 discru- discussion stream. So last week had two really good streams, in my in my humble opinion. Uh, Diaclia, thanks for being a Yonko cheer member for 12 months, man. Yo, Morge, haven't joined in a while. Busy with studies. I'm just... I was about to say what a coincidence, and then I'm just now remembering that, yeah, it's, it's finals time for all of you guys, right? 
Watching from Kosovo, BTW. You may find that interesting. You should visit for some good food. What's Kosovo? I don't know what Kosovo is. What's Kosovo? Let's find out. Is that in Malaysia? Is that why you're bringing it up? No. It's a country. I didn't know it's a country. It's in the Balkans. I like Balkan food. Um, there's a restaurant in D.C. that you all should go to if you ever get a chance called Amber. That's good Balkan food. But uh, I probably will not visit just for the food. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll let you know if I'm in Kosovo. I'll, I'll give everybody a heads up. Let's get the stream likes to 100 real quick. Shyam Junior Chuto. Hey, Morge, I'm starting YouTube. Would you be cool with me making an AI Morge using you and your content? <laughs> I didn't even know that's a thing. No, I would not be cool with that. Candy is good. Gaming, uh, gaming what? Gaming C. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Morge. I believe I saw you at a convention after party just this weekend. Didn't get to say hi. The whole con and party was crazy. That was something that my friends pulled me into. I take no, no, uh, what do you call, uh, <laughs> no responsibility for, um, whatever going to the con, um, <laughs> whatever happened at the con, but it was a good time. Uh, Breezy2x, thanks for the five. I did also meet one random other person there who recognized me, and then they were like, let me take a photo with you. And then it was like, wait, I'll take a photo with you later for some reason. And then the person never found me again. So I'm like, why didn't they just do it now? I don't know. I don't understand people sometimes. Um, Breezy2x, thanks for the five. How likely is it that the top tiers of the final war, Dragon, Akainu, Mihawk, Shanks, are stronger than the top tiers of the old gen, Roger and Whitebeard? Um, I mean, I think that the... I think people are looking at it maybe a little bit the wrong way, which is basically the top tier, like the. F <laughs> so the old gen, obviously, Roger, Whitebeard, Garp, um, Rocks, right? Th that sets a very high bar, right? But when we're talking about the final war, we're not talking about like defeating, like defeating a Kainu isn't the, the final war, right? We're talking about Emu, right? So if you want to talk about the bar for where the final war is going to be at, the characters that we're looking at that are going to be the main headliners of the final war at the end of the day it's not going to be it's not going to be like mihawk or even a kind of like the top tiers coming out of one piece at the end of the day is going to be luffy emu blackbeard right like these are the headliners of the final war right um well maybe a kind of if he gets a power boost like a conqueror's hockey or something like that um but the other characters that you're talking about like ultimately we kind of know shanks mihawk uh Dragon even, they're stepping stones, right? Shanks is most likely going to be a hype tool for Blackbeard. Dragon will most likely, uh, Dragon will probably get a good win, maybe a couple good wins to hype him up, but he will likely be, you know, he's not going to defeat Emu. I wouldn't be surprised if Dragon's a stepping stone to hype up Emu. Worst case, maybe just to hype up a Kainu more or something, but I, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, I hope at least Dragon goes down to Emu if he's going down to anyone, but those are the characters that, that like, you know, that's the final end game level of One Piece. And yeah, I think End of Story Luffy is going to be stronger than the the Roger Whitebeard generation. I think obviously Emu is stronger than them. Blackbeard might be around the same level as Prime Roger, Prime Whitebeard. I wouldn't be surprised if just around that same level. Um, but yeah, those guys, obviously, it's just, um, you know, it's not like, I think you're looking at it kind of the wrong way if you're like, well, Shanks and uh, Dragon and Mihawk, they need to be stronger than that generation because it's like, They've never been suggested to be stronger than that generation. Every single beat in the story has uh, <laughs> has made sure to establish that those guys are the legends. These guys are living in the secondary era, post post the tippy top legends, but still, still very strong in their own right. And um, yeah, they're not the final bar, right? The final bar is something next level that Luffy's gonna hit, and that's basically surpassing both Whitebeard Roger generation and the current generation. Nandu V, thanks a lot. Thoughts on how Chainsaw Man Part 2 has been going so far? I don't think it's too good right now, but I thought the last chapter was good. Um, I thought that Chainsaw Man Part 2, the way it was being written much earlier, was, uh, like, I'll always say, I think I was really enjoying... Cha what am I doing? I was really enjoying Chainsaw Man Part 2, um, I, I would say to, like, chapter 30, like, 30 chapters in or something like that. How many chapters? Like, uh, it's 150 in, right? Um... Let me take a look, actually. There's, there's a certain point after which I think it kind of loses <laughs> loses a bit of uh, what I think makes it 
makes it great. Uh, and I don't want to reference the arc because otherwise I'd spoil people, obviously. One sec. I think it's had a couple interesting developments, and I thought the last chapter sets up for something interesting, potentially for the main character. Um, but I think overall, it's... Uh, it hasn't... Oh, shit, this happened... Oh, my God, this arc was way more recent than I... Or actually, way longer ago than I thought. Time flies, man. Yeah, I think after a certain arc began, it was this arc that began around like 120 125-ish basically this little mini arc yeah like 120 yeah the arc that took place in the 120s uh i think from then on i think that the story kind of it just it feels like night and day like the first 120 the first 20 chapters of chainsaw man part two are really really nicely paced very slow very subtle characterization just really really uh, allowing moments and little scenes to just play out and not obsessed not not too focused on moving the plot along quickly right just letting letting character dynamics develop letting simple chapters where almost nothing happens play out and with his writing style and how he approaches humor little absurd situations character takes etc uh, a lot of it really really it it feels like a very, very nice, subtly written, nuanced story for the first 20 chapters. And then something just happens and it feels like suddenly things have to move along too fast or he's in a rush to get certain th to certain things and a lot of the writing and ideas become a lot more heavy-handed. And I'm just like, holy shit, uh, I don't know what happened here. <clears throat> Pat Galley, thanks for the two. Eric says Shanks will not die to Blackbeard stop it. Okay, he doesn't have to die, but he's going to lose to Blackbeard, you know. <laughs> uh, that's going to happen. Um, do a stream and about guessing the plot of Two Piece. Oh, fuck, I forgot that's what we're doing. Part of the reason I'm doing this stream is because of the video that's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, Egghead's been going on for, for over, a, over a year or just one year? Over a year now. Over a year now. Lisa Kulik says Fushi Fujimoto is back cooking again. I mean, I think the recent chapters have potential. Like, he, he's hit an interesting point, but I feel like he rushed things to get to this point. Like, he moved, uh, moved the story along in a very forced manner to make a lot of time pass really quickly, I think, and then got to this. And uh, the latest chapter, again, most recent development was interesting. Cheers says, Morge, would you still watch One Piece if the final war turns out to be a volleyball match and Luffy is a setter? <laughs> That'd be such karma. I'd learn a lesson for shit-talking Haikyuu. Kurokami Najimi says, losing or dying, it's the worst theory in the com community. Why? Wait, why are people actively against Shanks losing the Blackbeard? What's the... Isn't that just... <laughs> isn't that just pretty straightforward and basic? It's not like I'm talking about, like... The raid failing here or something like that like isn't this just <laughs> isn't this just a widely accepted thing it's just what <laughs> what's what, what's pretty much kind of paved out to seemingly take place in the next few arcs or so you know like it's come on it's uh it's, it's blackbeard luffy's final villain right final opponent for pirate king i think you can imagine Shanks seems to be kind of the gatekeeper to becoming Pirate King, Luffy's mentor figure, right? They both have a vendetta against each other, Black Shanks and Blackbeard. What's the what's the what's the part that suggests that it's not going to happen? Eric says cuz it's outdated at this point. That's like saying the hero defeating the villain is outdated at this point. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen in pretty much every story. <laughs> what does that what does that mean? <laughs> You know what? We're kind of done with uh, heroes defeating villains just because it's been done so often. So, you know, One Piece will end with Emu defeating Luffy. That's not an argument, dude. That's just saying you don't like it. That's not an argument. Yeah, Luffy would... If we're being honest, if we put Luffy in the high verse I don't know much about volleyball, but he definitely wouldn't be a fucking setter. Luffy's a... He's a closer. Like, 
I don't fucking get how. It, I don't want to go off on another rant, but somebody explain to me how this is hype. Being the setter, how's that? Hype? I just don't get it. It's uh, spiking is cool. Like spiking is hype, but setting is just setting, right? What what is it? What's the? How's that hype? I don't get it. I guess it's like assists in basketball, right? It's like being a point guard is hype. But then, like, assists are never as cool as scoring. So, <laughs> like, you know, the coolest point guard in history is obviously Steph Curry. You know, it's not like fucking Chris Paul or, like, Rondo. Yeah, Luffy would spike. Blackbeard no diff law? No diff... <laughs> That you think that that establishes him as a uh, like final enemy for Pirate King material? Mm-hmm. I think what what gets me about it is I think just the visual of setting. To me, the visual of setting isn't cool, fundamentally speaking. You know, because like um, spikes are cool, right? I think that's something you don't have to be a volleyball fan to to just think spiking the volleyball looks cool, right? Because it's, it's just visu- visually cool. You jump in the air, spike the volleyball. It's cool. Um, yeah, to me, it's just with setting, I think just the visual of going like like that, I don't know. It's just that <laughs> just doesn't seem exciting to me personally. Like, basketball, sometimes you, like, if there's a cool, flashy assist, it'll be, like, behind the back or something like that. Or, you know, people get creative with it with, like, you know, elbow passes or whatever. Um, I just don't get get it with setting. Jesse Smith's is magic. Magic for sure. Yeah, magic's cool, but he's not cooler than Steph Curry. Like, scoring is always going to be more hype than assisting. Like, no one's ever like, oh, Magic Johnson, way flashier player than Michael Jordan. It's like, no, Magic's flashy, but, like... Michael Jordan's way cooler than Magic, you know? Scoring will always be more hype than assists. If you go through any player's high- highlight reel, it's their they're, they're, uh, they're most... Uh, Their top plays in history are going to be fucking game winners and shit, not, like, game assist, like, uh, assists to, to, I don't know, like... W- this isn't a debate. Like, it's just well-established in sports making a shot yourself is obviously always going to be more exciting than passing to somebody else to make a shot, right? Corey Taylor says, more to no ball. Dude, like, this is a joke. Find me one, like, like, okay, do you think Magic Johnson is cooler than Michael Jordan? Do you think Magic Johnson is cooler than Steph Curry, right? And the funny thing is, once you go past Magic Johnson, there's no other players who are, like, just assist specialists who are among the flashiest, coolest players of all time, right? Scorers come first, then assists. It's just the way shit is, you know? Being all around, that's great. Like, LeBron's all-time great scorer, all-time great assist uh, maker, right? Playmaker. But LeBron's best plays are going to be him fucking scoring, right? He's going to have a lot of good assists thrown in there, but scoring's flashier than assists. This is not controversial. (laughs) This is just like, (laughs) this is not a discussion. Nandu V, thanks for the two. Is Oda back with Egghead after Wano, or do you need more? I think Egghead's great. Um, I think for me, the the only thing in terms of like being back would just be I just want the main characters. I think that's the biggest piece missing for me right now. Storylines for the main characters. No, Magic is not more hype than Steph. If you want to debate who's a better player, I mean who's a more who's a greater player all time, I would say Magic Johnson has a better resume, therefore is a greater player all time. But he's not more hype than Steph Curry. Steph Curry single-handedly, well, the whole Warriors team or whatever, but the 2016 Warriors, like, the whole 2016 year, like, (laughs) do you know how many new fans of basketball are brought into the game just based off of Steph Curry's historic shooting? Video game numbers, breaking NBA 2K, yada, 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 the three-point revolution, all of that. That brought a lot of new fans into the game, myself included, all right? No fucking assist, (laughs) like... No dude's going to show up on the scene who's, like, doing crazy-ass assists that's going to have an effect like that. It's just not a thing. Stoop Kids says Morge actually hates magic. I don't hate magic, but, I mean, I've watched... I've gone back to watch, is the thing. 
Like, I've gone back to watch old games at points just because I want to see how much is hype. Um, and I'm not going to be like, oh, I've sat down and watched all 48 minutes. Um, but I've watched, like, full extended segments of games, like halves and stuff like that. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Magic Johnson is the most overrated player from anyone that I've seen from that era. Because his skills translate the least to what everybody is good at today. And people don't exaggerate about Michael Jordan, is the thing. Like, I don't know... I, so I watched like a Bulls Celtics game, right? And it was clear how good Larry Bird was. Like it was very, very clear that one. I think there were fewer players that could really create their own shot the way that players create their own shot nowadays. So like Larry Bird was really great, but there was such a stark difference between how Larry Bird was guarded versus how Jordan was guarded because literally it felt like <laughs> when Jordan was going up to take shots, he would just get swarmed. Like he would like there would be so many hand like so many people coming at him and like when larry like larry bird was more one-on-one -on -one basically how he's being guarded throughout the game at least that i watched and it was just so blatantly clear that jordan was way more athletic way more skilled than basically the entire like it was just like a dude from the future playing with npcs if that makes sense so i get the hype of jordan i gained more respect when watching like actual extended old old footage of Jordan because you can see that the gap in just skill and athleticism between him and his era is really really significant and I don't know if it, it can even happen again in the future just because you know technology keeps improving sorry not technology but you know like nutrition how people take care of their board bodies etc just keeps improving you get more athletes more talent in the game um but that really was an era where you know, it's not like other players weren't athletic, but you can see a huge difference between one guy's abilities versus everybody else in a way that I don't know if you can as much today. Um, I just don't think it can happen again. Because, like, you know, for there to be that sort of a gap, you would need some guy that can, <laughs> like, some actual superhuman, like, made-in-a-lab type person. Because now we've just got too many people that are sort of freaks in nature. Jaren's Rambo, thanks for the two. Is Thriller Bark hated? Why? Why is Gecko hated? I don't think Thriller Bark's hated. I think it would be disliked if not for its... Not disliked, but I think a lot of it rides on nothing happened. Um, I do think that a lot of the arc is not that necessary. It's a 50-chapter long arc. Like, compare Egghead, which is... What? Egghead's, what, 30 chapters so far? No, it's actually coming up on... It's creeping up on 50. Egghead will probably be at least 50 by the time all is said and done. But compare the impact plot-wise of Egghead to Thriller Bark. And Thriller Bark's interesting because it... it okay, so it, it does several things that kind of break um, the mold of what you kind of expect at that point in the story. So One Piece had... As time went on, every One Piece arc began became more and more about building up larger storylines and building momentum to future plots, right? Um, but earlier in One Piece, it was fine to have certain arcs that are kind of... Just side trips, side quests that aren't as important, really, right? Um, move the plot along a little bit, but nothing crazy. We were kind of hitting a point. You know, we'd done any slobby, right? Um, we were moving into the big league story-wise. Things were getting set up, right? We're learning about the world government. We're learning about the Yonko, things like that. It was... Like, this, it felt like the world was coming together in such a way, and there were so many interesting things being established and larger plot plot developments taking place that it felt like we were a little bit late in the game, I think, at that point in time, to have just a side trip for the sake of a side trip almost, which was kind of what Thriller Bark is. Um, and that's not to say it does nothing for the story. It plants the seeds for Wano. It, um, you know, foreshadows a good number of things. It's a good little... Um, teaser for the new world, like Moria gives us a teaser for the new world. Um, but ultimately, a lot of what happened in it could be condensed into some other storyline, probably, if Oda had really wanted to. So one, it was a side trip at a point where we're probably just about at the end of the point that we'd be okay with side trips in that story. And two, it's a lot longer than any sort of side trip that we would normally have. Like, this isn't a baby, like, Davy backfight, you know, 15, 20 chapter little excursion. This is a 50 chapter long arc i do think that the nothing happened moment at the end of it really really sells it um and i also think that the novelty of the straw hats doing their big fight against ors 
it's fun to look back on. And it was fun to read, for me at least, uh, week to week when Thriller Bark was coming out. But I did actually, one of the longest breaks I took reading One Piece week to week was during Thriller Bark. Um, I took a break and I came back right around the time that Orr's got his shadow, basically. So uh, I caught it during the fights and everything like that. But that was one of the longest One Piece breaks I ever took, for sure. Maybe the longest. I don't think it's hated, though. Umer Ula, thanks for the five. Theory, after losing to Zoro, Mihawk will raise his sword, promise to never lose, and then say Captain Buggy will be king of the pirates. NBA stream, question mark. Uh, maybe this year during the playoffs or something, we might do an NBA stream. If there's, like, something really hype going on in the playoffs. If it's, like, Nuggets heat again in the final, I probably won't do that, but let's see. Okay, let's get to the main topic of the stream. Let's get to the thing. BeatGamer99 says Thriller Bark is the new Skypea. So Skypea used to have that same sort of connotation as uh, Thriller Bark, but the further we went on in the story, the more significance Skypea clearly gained. Um, because Skypea foreshadows kind of the entirety of One Piece in a sense. The flip side is you could say the same that Thriller Bark foreshadows lots of, you know, like Wano, but just foreshadowing Wano isn't as big of a like it's like okay cool we got hints about samurai and kaido being name dropped and okay this oni monster thing which kind of comes back again in in wano in a sense but not really explained um we got hints about that sort of stuff but um you know just foreshadowing one other arc is not the same as basically you know skypea which foreshadows the full story in a sense right like all of one piece what is one piece what is this where what are the origins of ancient weapons and things like that a lot of these things like what the importance of the moon the importance of the sun um i think skypea just it sets up too much or it it you can keep going back to skypea and like pulling new knowledge or realizations for it for the end game of all of the, like the entire story whereas with like thriller bark it's just like cool little easter egg not easter eggs but like little bits of foreshadowing for Wano, but it's just not the same thing. So, like, like one is significantly more important at the end of the day than the other. Um, and I think that even just the fact that, like, Wano, we didn't need certain things foreshadowed, but Skypea, you definitely needed to foreshadow things like the Sun God, right? Nika. You needed to do things like that. You needed to have the drum scene and things like that to make Luffy's gear fifth stuff not just completely random. Whereas, you know, in Wano, I don't think we needed to have Kaido name dropped in Thriller Bark to, for it to really matter that much in Wano. It wouldn't change things too much, in my opinion. Bruna Cabral, thanks for the 10. A child being the parent's weakness is how Dragon loses. Dragon defeats Garling, Topman, even Emu, with or without Luffy's help, but Emu will attack Luffy and Dragon jump in front to save him. I hope that's not the case. I mean, I think that Dragon's going to be stronger than people think. If there is one character in the current generation, so earlier question was like, is Dra like is anyone from the new generation going to be strong enough? Yada yada, um, like or is the new generation Dragon Shank Shanks Mihawk Akainu, etc. Um, are they stro stronger than the Roger Whitebeard generation? My general answer is no. But if there is one character that could be the case for, I would say Dragon would be the answer, in my opinion, just because the the point in the story where he would be most relevant is you know when it's time to actually take on him and let me show you guys something here this is interesting in my opinion all right so quick quick quiz for chat what are the two god type villains that luffy has defeated in the story that most are that are most similar to um to him basically like what are the two characters that really foreshadow emu that uh you know that there's a bit of a uh what's the word yeah I, I guess a bit of a leads to b leads to c sort of thing like what are the god type villains that luffy's defeated so far zero says nl dofi yep nl dofi nl dofi right uh that is correct Yep, Stormy says Anna and Doflamingo. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're all on the same page. I've done lots of videos about it, and I think it's just common knowledge for, for lots of people as well, right? 
So there's two very similar scenes with NL Do Flamingo, right? Two very similar scenes. Um, in Skypea, it's probably going to be chapter what? I don't think I can nail this first try. It's probably like 280. Oh, I'm probably like four chapters off, five chapters off. Around here. Okay, I'm going to show you two scenes, two very similar scenes. Um, when does this one happen? Seven. I feel like this is around here. Okay. So, two scenes where. Come on. Okay. Very similar scenes. So, uh, you, Anel and Del Flamingo were both pretty, pretty uh, uh, <laughs> uh, overpowered for their respective arcs, outside of Luffy, obviously. And we get a very similar scene where there's a character who's kind of the driving force, almost like the main character of the arc. Like, I would say the main character of Dressrosa was Law, and I would say the main character of Skypea was Wiper, right? And we get these important scenes where these two characters who've had a long-held grudge against God, one that's very personal to them, right? Wiper against uh, NL, Law against Doflamingo. Um, this God figure has basically been wiping the floor with everybody. No one's been able to do anything for them, against them. But in this one moment, um, a character is able to get um, a surprise attack on them. So Wiper against NL. What are you doing? Kairoseki. He's got this basically hidden move up his sleeve, and he hits him with this big finishing move, right? Same thing with Law. He set up this little trap for Doflamingo. His uh, ace up his sleeve, Gamma Knife. Gets him with that, right? This is supposed to be the move that, that kills God, right? So for a moment, it seems as though God is dead. They succeeded. But then... Hold up. For a moment, it seems like they got him. Um, but then... <laughs> Law does it a couple times, I forgot. Oh, next time was Counter Shock. They just get up. They just get up. And they give some BS solution for why they survived. Doflamingos was a bit more BS. This one made sense. He restart... Uh, uh, they use their broken fruits. NL restarts his heart. Doflamingo uh, fixes his internal organs with strings, and they get back up. And then basically at that point, it's kind of game over for everybody else, and then it's Luffy's turn to come into play and uh, take the challenge. And then Luffy, of course, succeeds, right? So the reason I bring that up is because I wouldn't be surprised if we get some sort of a similar scene with Emu. If we get something sort of similar with Emu. Um, I would love to see it, like, I... I think it's one of the things that Oda kind of likes with this this uh, this God concept of the difficulty of defeating God, of, of um, one, giving a certain character a moment that's a very important character in the arc, kind of the main character in a sense. Like, giving a character, like this rebel character, uh, a significant moment against God, like they've had this grudge for so long. Um, for a moment, right, they seem to get the, get the drop on God themselves, right? They pull off this this last resort gambit and it succeeds they seem to have killed the unkillable but then god still gets back up regardless right because that's just how broken they are and then the fight continues from there and then at that point it's luffy's turn to do it because he's at the end of the day the only one who can do it right at the end of the day luffy's doflamingo's only natural enemy although law's technically a d but law couldn't do it but and then uh luffy's also nl's only natural enemy so i'm curious i would love to see um i think it's a good thing to do because it it feels respectful for the to the characters that have been developed over the course of the arc, right? Um, like, Wiper's storyline in Skypea is much more compelling than Luffy's storyline in Skypea because Luffy doesn't really have a storyline in Skypea. He's really just wandering around. Like, we all know what Luffy's storyline in Skypea is, right? It's, uh, like, this pretty much sums it up.
this this sums up Luffy's level of personal involvement in Skypea, right? It's basically just this, right? It seems almost unfair that um, <laughs> Wiper's fighting for his fucking ancestral homeland and shit, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like literally, like come on, like look at this. This is badass, right? But at the end of the day, it's. <laughs> It's just, Luffy literally doesn't know anything about what's going on. He just shows up and, uh, <laughs> and, like, literally, a wandering idiot going through the forest, singing random ass songs, looking for some gold that he just found out about two days ago, um, and then he's the one to take out God, right? Obviously, in the final war, it'll be more significant, right? Luffy will have more of a story in the final war, I assume. But in, in Dressrosa, it's something similar, like, Luffy's talking about he's going to take down Doflamingo. If you ask him why, he's like, oh, it's because Rebecca gave me food and shit, right? Like, he really has no no place taking um, Doflamingo's, you know, uh, not his head, I guess, because he doesn't actually kill him. But, um, like, there's a good panel to illustrate it. Let me, let me try and pull it up. It's, uh, it's kind of early on in, um, in the Dressrosa battle. But it's, uh, you know, like, it's fairly self-aware. Like, look at this. Um, it's the panel where, shit, it's the panel where, I don't know what chapter this is going to be, like, they're all riding up that bull, they've got, everyone's there, it's like, Kiros is on, okay, okay, it's somewhere in the middle here, let's try 755, Kiros is on there, Jesus Christ, I forgot how fucking, <laughs> there were so many, like, nothing chapters in the middle of Dressrosa. Where the fuck is this? One chapter back? Anyone know where this is? I'm not roasting Wiper. Wiper's awesome. Like, if I had it my way, Wiper would have succeeded in killing Eno. But I like the way that... Uh, oh, okay, here we go. I like the way that... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm always going to like seeing Luffy do it. You know? Um. Anyway. Cavendish talking about, I'll be the one to strike down Doflamingo. Luffy saying, told you he's mine to beat. Law saying he's mine. Kiris is saying he's mine. But, like, everybody has more for a reason. I guess not Cavendish. He's like, this is a personal score. Returning the kingdom to King Riku is my sworn duty, right? So that's, Kiros has, like, a personal thing. Like, I must bring an end to the tragedy of ten years ago. Like, he's carrying an actual, like, this is his fucking story. Like, this is his life. <laughs> this is his storyline, right? But then Law's like, if we're basing this on time, my grudge started 13 years ago. Like, this is Law's entire life. He's been living to do this. And then Luffy is just pulling at this BS that mine is 30. No, it's not. <laughs> he's not even 30 years old. Uh, but he just wants to do it because Rebecca gave him food. Anyway, um, long way of saying, why am I saying this? Yeah, it's kind of like this. So the way I kind of look at it, and we might be making too much of a, of a leap here, but um, uh, I feel like Dragon kind of is similar to a Kiros Law Wiper type, right? Where it really has been his journey these last 40 years. God knows how old the dude is. Um, but he's working to take down the Celestial Dragons. Like, that is his goal. He wants to free the world. He's he spent all this time cash, whatever, emotional investment, energy into building this revolution to, to free the world. And Luffy's just been fucking around doing this pirate stuff. But ultimately, Wiper's going to fall short. Or not Wiper. I'm calling him Wiper now. Uh, <laughs> Dragon is going to fall short. And Luffy's going to be the one to step in at the end of the day, take care of business, right? So my one thought is kind of like, I wonder if we get to see kind of a similar scene like the one that I showed with uh, Dragon and, or sorry, fucking mixing these guys up so much now. Wiper and Law, if we get to see kind of a similar scene, I think that'd be kind of cool. Just to make it feel as though Dragon's able to get something in, get a significant moment in against Emu or something like that. I think that'd be really cool to see. Um, and I think it would fit the trend that Oda kind of did of, you know, this moment where this, this, uh, you know, this figure that's been a major role player in the in the storyline, who's held this grudge for a long time, who's been working their entire life on this elaborate revenge plot, right? They get their big moment against God, so that kind of is a good moment for them, but then at the, at the same time, it shows just how powerful God is, because maybe Emu gets back up, and then that's the end of Dragon's uh, role in the, in the climax. I think that'd be kind of cool to see, in my opinion. Embarrassing for Dragon? I mean, like... And at the end of the day, like, we know Dragon's not going to defeat Emu. We just know it's not it's not happening. So, <laughs> if you 
want to call it embarrassing. I guess it's embarrassing, but it, it is the way it is. You know, we accepted it with law. You know, we accepted it with uh, most of these characters that they they don't get to be the one to to take down the big bad, no matter how long they've been working at it, how much of their life they've devoted to it. So it's just it's Luffy's story. Um. Yeah, I think that. Uh, but anyway, that's a thought. I think it'd be cool. If uh, Dragon has a moment against Emu where he's able to pull something significant off, and uh, yeah, that'd just be cool to see. Um, and then maybe Emu gets back up. Can't kill him that easily. You know the drill. Anyway. I hope Dragon gets some other wins separate from that first, right? Like, Wiper got to take out one of uh, NL's priests. Dof uh, Law got to take out Virgo and Treble. You know, I hope Wiper... G <laughs> Fucking God, man. I will say I've had very little sleep over the past three days. So... Um, <laughs> I got a nap earlier today, but it wasn't a solid nap. I need a, I need a 10 hour sleep day. Eric says, lol, Sabo will be that guy, not Dragon. I feel like, I just can't, I mean, with Sabo, I'm just like, I feel like he's got such a long way to, to go to, to get to that level of strength where he would be relevant against. Like, I'm going to be honest. I can't see like Sabo, how he can't even beat an admiral right now, as far as we know, right? I can't, I can't imagine Sabo beating an admiral, let alone beating like a Yonko or a Gorosei or something like that. Let alone beating like what's the gap? Like I, I, like Sabo can't beat an admiral, right? Like let's be real, he's he's basically first mate level as far as we know, right? He's not <laughs> so doing something against like an admiral. And doing something against, like, a Yonko or even a Gorosei. Like, I can't imagine Sabo beat... At this moment in time, I personally cannot imagine Sabo beating a Gorosei, personally. Because to me, it looks like... I feel like Saturn is stronger than Kizaru. Sa Sabo's gonna have to jump several levels really fucking fast to get to that point. And then, let alone fucking f doing anything to Emu, you know? Like, that's that's a lot. Eric, in a very surprising prediction, says, In my opinion, I see a version of Luffy and Shanks storming the castle together, but we will see. And, uh... <laughs> Shanks is no surprise there, of course. Alright, let me catch these supers. Um, why is Shanks gonna be there? I don't know. He just he just will be. Um, Umer Ula, I feel like I didn't address your comment properly, but maybe that's because I just don't take it seriously. <laughs> Mihawk raising his sword, promising to never lose, and saying Captain Buggy will be king of the pirates. I just don't think that's gonna happen, personally. But, if it did, you called it here first. If it does. Bruna Cabral, thanks for the 10. A child being the parent's weakness is how Dragon loses. Dragon defeats Garling. No, no, we covered this. That's how we got on topic here. All right. The Water God, thanks for uh, the five. Do you think Luffy will use the surgery? Do you think Law will use the surgery on Luffy in the climax? Or do you still think Luffy will die like Roger in Logetown? Also, Usopp dies. I would really, really love for Luffy to, for One Piece to end with Luffy on that execution stand. I think that would be fantastic. Um, it's just really hard to say what the word world would look like afterwards, you know? Like, would Luffy just be a free man? I think Luffy will never lose the title of pirate. Um, I just think the town of beginning and end, I think there's a certain beauty, beauty to it. And, uh, you know, what's interesting. There's still this little line that Luffy dropped, and it might not mean anything. But it was delivered in a certain way that makes me think it might mean something, right? Uh, it's an interesting little line. It's, uh... Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? It's here. Somewhere. It's either the chapter before this or after this. Oh, yeah. No, it's right here. Uh, it's an interesting li line. The only w uh, Shut up. The only one who decides where I'll die is me. It feels like a fairly impactful line. It's, you know, Oda's devoting basically a, like, the finale of the chapter. The full page is kind of this declaration by Luffy. I think that there's something there. Um, Luffy, it's like, the specificity of saying the only one who decides where I'll die is me. I feel like we do get to see Luffy choosing to go out on his terms, much like Roger on an execution stand. I think that'd be cool. I also just feel like I don't know what, what the fuck Luffy would want to do after he achieves all of his dreams and everything like that. Like, I feel like he's a character that's written in a way that it just seems so, um, like, you once he achieves everything that he set out to achieve, like, he, he traveled the world. He saw all of the most interesting things he could pro possibly see. 
what else would there be? Like, he would feel so sad. Like, keep in mind, Luffy's a character, as long as he's going out on his terms, he's never gonna, like, there's no sad ending to Luffy, you know? There's no sad ending to, to Luffy's um, uh, life, because, like, we've already seen, we already got the preview, right? Uh, let's see, it was chapter 99? Like, we already got a preview of, um, of, of dead Luffy. It's really not that bad. It's kind of sweet, right? Sorry, but it looks like I'm dead, right? He doesn't care. He smiles, right? That's, that's the whole thing, because Luffy lives with no regrets, right? So, to me, it's basically, I don't know, um, Luffy ending on an execution stand wouldn't be sad in the slightest. It's, uh, it's very poetic, in my opinion. It's where he, like, he completes everything that there is to complete in the world, basically for him, achieves his dreams, sees everything he could ever possibly want to see, makes, you know, the best friends ever, the best connections ever, etc., yada, 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 I don't know, um, and then finally he can go out on his terms, probably with some final, app, like, final important message or something like that, I don't know. Um, the water god, no, we just answered this, let's keep moving. Talon Bellamy, thanks. Did Shanks losing his arm stop him surpassing Roger? No, I think Oda specifically put out some quote. Like, I think he answered in an SBS or something specifically that um, Shanks did not get weaker after losing an arm. Um, Eric Trollato, thanks for the five. Shanks is the guy that is waiting for Joy Boy. Follow logic from there. Fulfilling Roger's mission, etc., etc., you get it. Um, but... Well, what does that mean, though? Why does that mean? I don't feel like Shanks has the... Uh, if Shanks is the guy waiting for Joy Boy, I don't feel like Shanks has quite as much... Sti I, I can't really imagine... Like, what are we talking about? Are you saying that Shanks would be the one to, to fight against Emu or something like that? Like, I think you mentioned Sabo, right? What are you, what are you suggesting here? What's the, what's the suggestion? I don't know what you're getting at exactly. Um, I, like, I might be totally wrong on this. I like Shanks. I like, I'm open to Dragon. I don't think we've seen enough of the character for me to be like, I like this character. Let it not be forgotten that I still hold the, <laughs> the newspaper incident against Dragon. I, I just don't think we've seen enough for, for me to be like, I like this character. I dislike this character. Right now, I'm just like, interested in the potential of the character. But, um, like, I like Shanks as a character more than Dragon, for the record. I, I, I think I've been very very open and roasting dragon in the past right i did defend him quite a bit during the Ginny stuff but that's just for me that's a logistical thing like or a, that's a logic based thing i'm just like why would like why would why would he be saying saving Ginny? That, that makes no sense and like let's all just take a step back and acknowledge that even if we don't know this guy too well he's clearly the only guy that's actually doing something productive in the entire planet of one piece so um like i acknowledge that's his role but i don't really have any particular attachment to the character yet Right. So when I say that from my perspective, it seems right now like to me, Shanks's role in the story seems more based. I agree that Shanks is probably some sort of a gatekeeper or guide to be to, to allowing the next Joy Boy to come into fruition. Right. But I do feel as though Shanks's role is set to conclude sometime around the point that the One Piece is found. Um, Luffy defeats Blackbeard. Luffy maybe already gets start being called Pirate King or something like that, etc. I feel like the pirate section of One Piece, as that kind of concludes, the One Piece is found, etc., the final battle for that is over. I feel like then there's a, the second half of things, which would be Dragon's half, which would be more focused on the actual fight against the world government and the Celestial Dragons and, um, you know, I suppose the Marines as well, Emu, Gorose, etc., and I feel like that's where Dragon and the Revolutionaries would be more involved. I say this simply because that just feels like where their two roles in the story have been more centered. Shanks more so playing the... Like, he's been set up more so, it feels like, as a, a Blackbeard counterpart, I suppose. More so focused on the One Piece discussion, the conflicts among pirates, keeping the peace among pirates, but also guiding the pirate world, etc., finding the next Joy Boy. Dragon set up for being that guy in the final war because that's really what dragon's been gearing up for this entire story that's kind of how i view it so they kind of it's like maybe they're both as strong as each other maybe shanks is even a little stronger i don't know like i don't 
I don't know. If I had to guess, I would say maybe Dragon just because he comes second. But maybe it's either way. I don't know. I will say that I feel like they play two halves. They play a similar role, in my opinion, probably in the in the final saga. It's just that one's going to come after the other. That's my guess. Dick so small, I piss on my balls. Thanks for the 10. The ancient language is all the weird laughs, laughs of the One Piece world transcribed into language. A symbol of humanity's joy persevering through time. Why Roger said the final island had a tale full of laughs. That's a nice idea, but I really hope you're wrong. Because it just gives us so little information. Like, it's more of a symbolic little thing. But it's not something that's mind-blowing, really, or does anything for the plot, I suppose. Sets us up for some new goal. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 would, be, <laughs> it would be sweet, but not, not exactly what... I'm looking for at the end of One Piece. I hope that's not what the One Piece is or what the final polyglyph is. I also feel I'll say that I think Robin would be pissed as well. So I don't think I'm alone in that sentiment. Eric says he is far too important to be just a hype tool for Blackbeard at this point. I think Shanks is going to do a lot more. Like, don't get me wrong. I think he's going to do a lot more. Like, I just think that <laughs> I don't... I, like, I said that I think Dragon could be a hype tool for Emu. That doesn't mean I don't think Dragon's going to do other stuff along the way. I think Shanks is going to have a significant role to play over the course of this final saga. I just think that ultimately his final point would be basically losing to Blackbeard and then Luffy defeating Blackbeard. And that's just the way shit goes, you know? Um, that doesn't mean that's his only role to play, you know? Um, I would be more worried about Mihawk at this point in time because I feel like right now we need to see something from Mihawk before Zoro beats him. We need to see something from Mihawk very soon before Zoro beats him because Shanks at the very least has had moments. He's never had like an elaborate fight, but that's kind of because he's never had to. But, you know, clashing with Whitebeard, stopping Akainu, scaring off Green Bull, one-shotting Kid. It's all brief stuff, but he's had his moments. I hope that Shanks gets at least one good significant fight in against someone significant, one or two or something like that one more likely but something really impressive and then he can go lose to blackbeard and then the story whatever um but mihawk we need to squeeze something in for him before the zora fight just to make the zora fight more you know exciting um yeah it needs to just we need to feel like holy shit mihawk just did this like on on paper in front of our eyes right like we know he's done stuff in the past obviously he's the world's strongest swordsman he's beaten all the other swordsmen but or whatever <laughs> He, he should have, he, we could assume he's beaten all the swordsmen, right, in sword duels. We could assume, the important ones. We need to see him do something on paper so that it's actually exciting when Zoro beats him. Uh, I think Mihawk's the one that I'm, like, he's on a, I guess what's the word? Mihawk's the one that needs something soon. Um, I think the, the, yeah, yeah, the pressure is on him the most right now because, like, like, we never know when this fight with Zoro is happening, you know? You never know at the pace of the story. Like, how many arcs are left, right? Like, we, we don't know how much wiggle room he's got to get something in. Shanks needs something, in my opinion. Like, one last, at least one or two last big major things or whatever before it's time for him to go down to Blackbeard. Um, but Shanks has already done a lot of small but significant things throughout the story so far. So, it's not like we're desperate for something for Shanks. He just one-shotted Kid a little bit ago. What's one significant fight I'd say should happen for him or something something cool, right? It's like fucking old man Garp just got like three chapters straight of him fucking trashing an entire Yonko crew plus admirals. Uh, like plus an admiral, right? So I imagine Shanks will get something at least that good, right? If Garp's getting that, right? And then Dragon really needs something because he hasn't done jack shit so far. But I think Dragon's got the most time like, the time to get there, right? Because I think he comes last in the story. So we got the most room for Dragon to, to fit in some significant feats. So I'm not worried about him. So right now, main concern is Mihawk. I want to see Mihawk do something really cool soon. Shanks will get something, I believe, before Blackbeard. Dragon will. <laughs> it's not important right now, but he... Well, he will need to get something, but it's not super important right now. But we're, we're creeping up on the point where it's time for him to start doing shit. Breezy2x, thanks for the five. Which Straw Dream has the most potential for great character moments when achieved? That's a great point, and it kind of brings us back to the topic of the stream. Um, so I'll answer you while I'm typing this stuff. Um, I would say... That's a great fucking question. 
Let's take Luffy out of it. Just because, like, Luffy, we don't even know his full dream. We don't even know his full dream, right? Let's take Luffy out of it. Let's keep it interesting. So, I'm going to say, I feel like, just unfortunately to me, I think that Robins and Frankies, on paper, and obviously Oda's got great ideas for stuff, right? So, he might have some, some really cool... Um, really cool uh what do you call um scenario planned out but at this moment in time i can't really think of a way to make robin's moment and frankie's moment really that dramatic because uh with robin it's just gonna be reading so it'll be epic what she's reading to us right we probably get the full void century flashback through robin i like to think at least and it'll be really cool for the reader but I'm like, how do we make this into a really dramatic character moment and not just exposition? Maybe Robin's fucking crying or something or having some flashbacks to Ohara or something during it. But, you know, that's not quite the same as um, a really dramatic character. Mo like, when I think of a really dramatic character moment, I think of something like Zoro's Nothing Happened, right? Like, if you were to ask me, hey, how would Oda write a scene that showcases Zoro, like a, a Straw Hat's loyalty to Luffy best? I'd never be able to, to imagine or think of Nothing Happened, right? So that's what I'm kind of hoping for in the future when we get like the Straw Hat's greatest moments down the line. I can't really imagine something like like that powerful or that dramatic. It'll be a nice moment, but I can't imagine it quite being a very powerful dramatic moment when Robin's just reading the Poneglyph. Again, she'll probably be crying or something like that or, you know, some shit and some flashbacks or whatever. But uh, turning into a scene or, or you know, a really... Yeah, just a really memorable, iconic scene, right? That, that, that we, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think you guys get what I'm saying, basically. But, like, is it going to be a nothing happened type moment? I'd say no. Frankie, same thing. His dream is just for the ship to, to reach the end of the Grand Line. I don't think there's a ton of potential there. Um, I think that... If we change it around a bit to say, like, okay, what about something like building Pluton, which might also be, it's not his dream, but it plays into kind of um, things that have been at least set up for his character in the past. I think that could be dramatic, but again, building a ship, I just don't know. Um, I'm going to say this. You know what? I'm, I'm tossing the question around a bit too long. I'm going to say si simply this. I think that the the potential for the most dramatic moment for Strahd achieving their dream would be Usopp. Because Usopp's done a lot of brave things so far. I think most of us would call him a brave warrior of the sea already. But that means that whatever the moment is that he just, that he actually becomes a brave warrior of the sea, right? Has to be something really, 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 really dramatic, really courageous, something that kind of without question seals who he is both to the reader but to him himself right and as many have talked about for some time i i like to believe the possibility of this happening but usopp just straight up sacrificing himself right going out the way that he talked about in little garden um sacrificing himself going out in a way that he feels that you know i'm dying as a brave warrior of the sea i think that that is the highest potential astrod could have for the moment that their dream is fulfilled right just because it's a it's the thought of Usopp maybe dying, right? Other other possibilities, I think Chopper curing Luffy, especially if it's a life-threatening scenario, as long as it's done in a much better manner than the Ice Oni virus, I think that could be really dramatic. Um, Robin's map, or sorry, Nami's map of the world, I think could be dramatic if it has to be used. I've always said that one of the ways that it could really come into play would be if they need to get back through the Grand Line or Paradise, like, if they need to get back through the New World or Paradise really, really, really fucking fast to get back for a war or something like that, right? If that's the case, then Nami's map of the world becomes extremely useful because normally you need to wait on the log post to be able to um, catch the next magnet magnetic field. There's a wait period, etc. But if Nami is able to just streamline the whole thing and then we just get a dramatic scene of her um, being like, yeah, just follow my lead. We're going to get back in time or something i think that could be a cool scene um but yeah i'd say usopp takes the cake zoro obviously i think that there's tremendous potential there i feel like it might be hard to top <coughs> sorry 
I feel like it might be hard to top the Baratier scene itself, because that's a very dramatic scene on its own. Um, but, uh, you know, Zoro's got tremendous potential as well. Oh, shit. Thank you, Virgil Hawkins. Missed three-month membership from Red Agrid. Thank you. Uh, if you had to, if you had your pick, which flashback would you like to see next? Oh, shit. Personally, I would like to see Shanks' flashback. Hopefully, it would be the best Yonko flashback. Um, God Valley. Just because we were so close to getting it. It was right there. It was in our fingertips. We had it right there. And then it slipped through our fingers. Um, but that's fine. Because that means Oda can devote more time to it later. So I'm okay with it. But I'm still impatient. Um, so I'd say God Valley. Uh, thanks for catching that, Virgil. Alright. Um, okay. Let me type this out. In the meantime, I'll say the final storm. Thanks for the five. What if S. Bear pawed S. Hawk away? Chapter 1078, page 8, as Kuma saving Luffy like in Sabodi. The truth of the scene will be revealed after Kuma arrives. What do you mean? You think, why would the, why would he, you think he pawed S. Hawk away, but that's not saving Luffy. Hold on, let me, let me take a look what you're talking about. How would that be saving Luffy? <laughs> I mean, they're all in bubbles, right? So how did he... Oh, I see. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. I see what he's saying. Okay. 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 So what we see here is the flame... Okay, so Mihawk is just missing. S-Hawk is just missing here in this panel. Um, so Final Storm is suggesting that S. Bear teleported him, uh, when the characters went looking. But it seems as though it was just an intentional, intentional decision that was made right here, that he left for that reason, so, um, I don't know. Um, I'm still kind of bummed that this fight, it's just, this fight is weird, it's a weird one. Because it's, yeah, they solved it with the bubble gum, bubble gums, bubble guns. But it's also, it feels like this obstacle was one that felt kind of interesting to see them overcome. You know, because it was presented as just like, it's it's challenging, right? Like they're panting, they're wheezing, they won't disappear, the flames on their backs are stubborn. Um, like they're, they're, they've clearly been pushed, you know? Um, and we don't really get to see whether Advanced Conquerors Hockey does work on them, you know? Uh, I feel like this is something that I would have liked to see the resolution to because it's j it's that fine line between is it important enough to show the resolution to it or not? I think it I think it just goes over that line just because it was presented as something that I felt like it was important for the characters to figure out how to do. Or at least to tell the reader, you know, can this be resolved with Advanced Conquerors Hockey? I don't know. Anyway, um, I, I feel like this is just s Hawk leaving. I don't think that that's uh, Kuma, S-Bear s teleporting him away. Yonko Commander, thanks for the 10. Did you watch JD's video Slandering Dragon? No, but I'm sure that it is funny. Jay's really funny. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm not such a huge dragon fanatic that I would <laughs> go in and want to... Uh, argue about what's most likely a funny roast of dragon it, it just doesn't matter again i don't really care about dragon as a character too much i'm just interested because he's portrayed as an interesting character um but i will defend him at moments where it feels like people are losing the bigger picture in that this is the only like it is kind of crazy considering how fucked up the whole celestial dragon system is how fucked up the world is how fucked up the world government is etc there's literally only one dude that's been working for so long to try and fix everything. There's just one guy that took it upon himself to create an army to, to resolve this conflict. And then everybody else is just fucking sailing around and drinking and shit, you know? Um, yeah, protecting a few little t islands here or there, but, like, Dragon's going around doing that for the whole world. I don't know. He's saving islands left and right. Uh, you know, I think it's important to keep that in perspective. I, I think no matter what, you can't come at Dragon. You can... 
I came at him for the newspaper thing because I was like, this is just stupid. This is just Dragon being stupid. But I don't think you can come at him for being, like, a bad person. I think that that's very difficult. Because then, if you're going after Dragon, then you have to start going after... Like, his moral compass is clearly a lot higher than Luffy, Whitebeard, Shanks, Garp, etc., right? He's the only person that's really devoted his life to doing truly the right thing. So, if we're coming after Dragon for being shitty, then that basically is like, okay... If we're going to do that, then now we have to go through all these other One Piece characters that we really like and talk about, yeah, how honestly they're all pretty shitty in the long, long, grand scheme of things, I guess, basically. If you want to hold this against this one dude, then, okay, we've got to start holding everything against all these other characters who are sitting idle during this, 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 and this event, basically, right? Like, you know what's fucking crazy? So Luffy right now, like the Straw Hats right now, have access to two ancient weapons, right? They have access to Poseidon. Like, Poseidon is literally Luffy's, you know, BFF, right? And Pluton. Frankie literally asked Luffy, like, you want Pluton? And Luffy's like, nah, I'm good, right? So think about that, okay? Because imagine we lived in a world where basically there's this huge, huge oppressive... Okay, I'm going to try and not tie it to real world stuff too much, but let's do a hypothetical, which is like, let's say that there's one country that is basically doing horrible acts of genocide, like Lucia Kingdom and stuff like that that is uh, oppressing various nations, that's this tyrannical empire doing all this terrible shit to all these innocent people throughout all these other little various nations and islands or whatever, right? Imagine that this evil, gigantic empire exists, and there's one other party that exists, one other nation, right? One other empire that exists, like Luffy is an emperor, that has the power to stop it, or do something about it, or challenge it, right? Because they have nukes, right? They have weapons of mass destruction. They have Pluton. Like, Luffy has Pluton at his, at his disposal, right? He has a weapon that could threaten the world government. Uh, and he's got Poseidon. He's got two out of the three ancient weapons. Not to mention his own his own strength, his own crew's strength, all of the various nations allied under him. But most importantly, like, he's got ancient weapons, right? So you've got this huge empire that is running rampant, doing all of this evil stuff. And there's one other empire that exists that can do something about it or at least challenge it in some way, or try and claim territories back, or try and cause a stalemate, or, like, negotiations or something. Like, put it in real-world world perspective, right? And this country just does nothing, and uh, basically just... I, I don't even know what you would describe this country as doing in this situation. Basically, it's just, like, fucks off, and, uh, I don't know, like, refuses to participate in global affairs while this basically let's say, Nazi regime or something like that just slowly took over like took over the entire planet, right? You would say that this other country that has the capability of doing something is a bad group, right? That's basically what Luffy is right now. He's essentially an empire that has all of the tools necessary to do something about the extremely oppressive, genocidal, dictator dictatorial force that is, like, destroying the current world, and Luffy is saying, fuck that, I don't really care. So, just put it in perspective, right? It's not that cool <laughs> if we apply real-world politics to it. But we like Luffy, and he's goofy, and he's funny, so we roll with it. <clears throat> anyway. Um, Virgil Hawkins. Oh, fuck. I missed Super... No, wait, wait. Okay, okay. I can catch all these. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get from uh, Yonko to your member dynamic first, because I can catch the Supers later. Um, I'm gonna go through the supers again. I'll get I'll get, get remix in, in a sec. Thanks. Um. Oh, I mi I missed a membership for me remix king. My bad. Okay, hold on, hold on. Remix king membership. Let me get you first. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, six months member remix king. Thank you. <laughs> Not sure if this was answered last stream, but Dragon mentions that having something slash one creates weakness. Then why the fuck would he have a kid? Well, what if that kid wasn't a kid, but a thing that came out of an egg? Ever thought about that? The egg theory is still yet to be disproven. But anyway, uh, why Dragon would have a kid? You know, like, it's not always intentional. I don't think every father running out there around with a kid wanted to have a kid. Are you saying Dragon should just never have fucked? That, like, he's got to be so paranoid about having a kid that, like, he's just like, okay, I'm never going to fuck because if I did and then, like, for whatever, you know, one in a 97% uh, chance or something like that, I end up having a child because of that. Um, I got. I would then have to worry about that app, like stuff happening to my 
my wife and child. Like, I don't know. I think that that's a little bit extreme. Because, like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like, he should be allowed to fuck. Like, that's, come on. You know, he probably just didn't expect that he would have a kid. And on top of that, you know, that's also not what you're thinking of in the moment. You know, like, you, you usually don't realize how much you love your kid, I would imagine, until the kid actually is born, right? And it, and it appears, right? That's not what you're thinking. <laughs> like, you're not having sex and thinking, like, oh, no, if I have a kid, I'm going to love it so much and it might be used as a weakness against me in the future. Like, that's just, uh, <laughs> that's a complicated thought process, you know? <laughs> but I get where you're coming from. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he like sat down like like Roger and was like, you know what, I'll be right back. Let me go have a son real quick. Uh, I think with Dragon was probably less intentional. Dynamic, uh, thanks for bringing Yonko to your member for nine months. If Usopp does and is somehow revived by Brooke, oh my god, I nearly threw up just reading that. Do you feel that would take away the significance from his death slash fulfilling, f- fulfilling his dream? Yes, it would. Anything that cancels out a death may... <laughs> Like, <laughs> anything that cancels out a death, like, come on, man. Like, you can't write a death scene and then reverse it. You just, you're not allowed to do those. You can't do those. You, okay, to be clear, you are allowed to do fake out deaths. Fake out deaths are different than writing fake death scenes. I tried to make that very clear in my Saul video, but fake out deaths are very, you know, they're quick. Like, they're, they're dramatic moments where, like, for a moment, the audience is giving, like, a... <gasps> Did this character actually draw, die? But it's it's usually left open to the imagination, and then pretty quickly it becomes apparent that like this character probably survived, etc. Like think uh think like Aragorn from the Two Towers when he went off that cliff. Like no one's like, oh shit, Aragorn's actually dead. It's more like, oh my god, give you a moment like, how did he survive? That's more so what you're thinking, right? Fake out deaths are okay. Death scenes, fake death scenes are like when you do all the the waterworks, the flashbacks, the character. Uh, character moments, etc. Like Pell's death, it's like that's a that's a fake death scene. Pound's death, that is a fake death scene. You can't write those. Um, anyway, let's move along. We're not going to talk talk about Saul just yet. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me catch these supers, and then we'll get to the actual stream topic. <laughs> Uh, wait, let me type this out at least. What are we calling it? Yeah, I guess what happens to all this? Yeah, yeah. What happens to each straw hat after One Piece, after the final war ends? I'm curious what people's opinions on this are. Because it's, there's two ways people think about it, right? One, the simple cop-out option is, like, the Straw Hat crew just all stay together and they sail the seas together indefinitely. I personally don't think that's the case. I don't think that that happens, personally. But I do want to do a quick poll to start with and just see, because that is option number one, if that's something that people think about. Um, one sec. Okay. Someone said, please don't Edo Tensei rocks. I'm not going to lie. I'd be okay with Edo Tensei rocks. <laughs> I'd be okay with it. Would you guys not want that? Like, do you guys not want it just because it's a thing that Naruto did? Like, imagine Naruto Imagine Naruto didn't exist. Imagine Naruto did not exist, all right? It's just not a thing, all right? Naruto doesn't exist, all right? If Naruto didn't exist... And somebody just asked you, like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, Roger defeated Rox back then, but wouldn't it be cool if Rox came back in the modern day and Luffy had to defeat him? Right? If somebody brought that up, that possibility that Rox coming back in the modern day and Luffy having to fight him, would you say that's not cool? Would you say that's not an interesting turn of events? I think it'd be cool. Shine V, thanks for the five. Hey, Morge, Oda got us good. He created the Seraphim to better tell us the stories of the seven warlords. You think that's true? He hasn't really used them in that manner just yet. We kind of see some of their similar tendencies, um, but only their worst tendencies, to be honest, like Mihawk deciding to go after the weakest first. That's weird to me, because that's I, that just doesn't feel like the Mihawk I would have expected. I thought he would have wanted to fight the strong... Like, tell me if I'm wrong, right? Wouldn't... 
like, am I wrong? Like, wouldn't Mihawk's natural tendency be to to want to fight the strongest swordsman there, which would be Zoro? Right? Like, isn't wouldn't that wouldn't that be it? I guess he's going under the command that he has to go do this as efficient. Like, he has to kill these people, so therefore he's in efficiency mode rather than what he wants to do. So maybe we give that a pass. Hancock, we saw her love for Luffy come out. S. Bear hasn't really done anything, so we haven't really learned anything through him. Um, but I, I could see the potential for that, but I don't know if that's actually going to be the case. African Lays, thanks for the five. Hello, Mr. Morge. I haven't been able to catch the streams lately, but I wanted to say thanks for the content you put out. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you just dropping in and saying a kind word like that. Thank you. Um, the water. I hope you're able to watch the VODs. The Water God, thanks for the 10. After War. Robin o reopens the library of Ohara and teaches the next generation. How do I want to do this? Do I just want to put people's ideas down? First, I want to have people vote on whether the crew stays together or not. Nami takes care of kids. Frankie equals new Vegapunk. Law surgeries Luffy. Who else would he use it on? I, I agree that Law using surgery on Luffy would be good, but at the same time, I want I don't want Luffy to be immortal. It just feels weird for Luffy to be immortal, in my opinion. Um, like immortal Luffy? I don't know. What I think would be cool would be if, like, Luffy's dies again, like he did in Kaido, like, against Kaido, like, the the ambiguous state of did he die or not or something, and Law uses a surgery to bring him, to resurrect him, in a way, um, if Luffy dies for a moment and then is resurrected. Um, that's not the same as a fake death scene, by the way. Uh, these are two different things. It's a fake death scene if, like... You go through all of the character emotions of like treating it as though this character is gone forever, which would most likely not be the case there. I'm saying something closer to what happened in 1043. Um, and like in that case, if Law is doing a certain surgery, which is not immortality surgery, but has the same thing, like resurrection surgery, I don't know. It's, it's headcanon at that point, right? Um, and Usopp dies horribly. <laughs> okay. Let's throw that in. I like the idea. Okay. Okay. Let's throw in options for each try. Okay. Let's say option one for everyone. Everyone just stays together on the crew and sails indefinitely. Maybe to space, because some people think that that's an option. I, I'm not going to say it's not an option. Because <laughs> in my opinion, if they don't go to the moon at some point in the actual story, I wouldn't be surprised if the story just ends with, like, space peace. <laughs> Strahd's just fucking off to space because they've conquered Earth, basically. Okay, option one for everyone, right? Other options. Here's the individual options. Okay, so let's do it like this. So Luffy... This is assuming they all split up. Other options if the, the crew splits. Okay, Luffy. I'm going to put down dies as option number one. Dies on execution stand voluntarily. That's option one. Uh, <laughs> alternatively, lives indefinitely because Law did immortality surgery on, on him. But this can't work with this because if Luffy's immortal, the crew can't split, you know? Because Luffy's not going to sail around by himself. He literally physically can't. He doesn't know how to navigate. And you could give him infinite time through immortality to learn to navigate, and he still wouldn't be able to. So it doesn't really make sense. So we'll add the others. Let's see. Sanji. Uh, wait, let's do it in order. Let me answer a question at the same time. Uh, Eyes96, thanks for the 10. I think Usopp also lied about dying when finding out what the One Piece is. Ah, uh, so it works together with his dream when he'll sacrifice himself as the warrior of the sea on some island, the timing works. When finding out about what the One Piece is. Oh, shit. I see what you're saying. I got confused there for a second. Here, let me pull up what he's saying, which is kind of an interesting little point. So he says... 
Um, hold on, hold on. Uh, it's probably 506 or something, 507. When he's talking to Rayleigh and asks about the One Piece, is basically what he's getting at. So Usopp asks, this chapter? Yeah, OK. OK. I don't want to hear it either. Yeah, that's right. I've got a disease that'll kill me if I find out about the One Piece. Shit. No, what, the thing is, though, that, like, the... Okay, not all of Usopp's lies come true, though, is the thing. Like, I think there's never been a time that his lie about, like, I've got blah, 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 island disease has come through come true you know what i mean like I'll, I'll die if i land on this island disease those ones have never come true also let's get the stream likes up to 200 real quick um yeah nami times why are you guys what is going on why are you guys talking about nami times ki why, why are there's why are there ship battles at we, we are okay i see because we're talking about post one piece so obviously the ships are coming up now i was like how are we even talking about this everyone's talking about like nami times kid Luffy times Hancock, Zora type. Ugh, God damn it. All right. All right. But we do have, it is a relevant thing to discuss, though, so I don't know why I'm getting uh, upset. This was the most relevant time to discuss it, if we're being honest. Who's on board with Rob and Frankie? Because I personally am. But I can't lie. There are a suspicious amount of Robin and Law bonding panel. Like, silent bonding panels. Like, they're just on the same wavelength and interested in the same stuff, which is, like... I don't know. <laughs> Very low-key good dynamic that's developing there. And a bit of a consistency with how often they show up with each other. Like how often Oda has them. Just like as a little pair somewhere. Uh, Rob and Frankie. Brooke I feel like is simple, right? Because Brooke is just going to be singing to a whale forever at... Uh, reverse mountain right so brooks is the simplest right because let's be honest none of the other like if this i feel like brooke is one of those friends in the straw hat crew that like if the whole crew broke up then no one's gonna want to hang out with brooke one-on-one -on -one, you know what i mean like like i think if robin and frankie if robin was like hey i've got nowhere to go frankie can i come back with you to to water seven frankie would be like yeah sure of course you know um I just don't get that vibe with Brooke. I think no one would really want him to follow them back to their hometown and just, like, be their friend forever. You know what I mean? I think he works... That's just the vibe I'm getting. Maybe I'm misreading the Strats as a friend group, but that's just... That's my personal feeling. I think Chopper would. Chopper would be cool with it. All right. Let's get back here. Silver says Luffy tries to sail by himself and dies of drowning. Oh, you know what would be really funny? Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, Hold on. So now I've got a now I've got um hold on I gotta look this up. Give me a second. <laughs> I'll answer another question in the meantime. The water god, thanks for the five. If Smoker doesn't join the straw, it's honestly, what is the point of his character if Fujitora and Kobe exist? I like to believe that Oda has something planned for Smoker because we've gotten like so much stuff for all these other Marines. Fucking Kizaru and Sentamaru at this point have gotten more of their character fleshed out in terms of their past and deeper motivations than Smoker, you know? I feel like the fact that right now Oda's going so hard on so many of the Marines, Garp, Aokiji, Kizaru, Kobe, Sentamaru, random new Marines that we just met that, like, showed up at, at uh, Hachinosu, you know? I feel like Oda's got something good planned for Smoker. Straw Hat material? Maybe not. Hard to say. Still believe it in my heart, though. But... But I think something significant is around the corner for him. Something significant. Um, hold on. Let me show you something for... <laughs> Here's what would happen if, uh, if Luffy got... Uh, um, ah, shit. Hold on. <laughs> okay, okay. So if Luffy got immortality, but the entire crew split up, right? It just wouldn't work because he's trying to sail by himself and he's incapable of doing that. So I guarantee within, um, within like, <laughs> within like one week of the immortal Luffy sailing the seas, 
this would be him. It would just be... <laughs> it would be this. He'd be in this situation. <laughs> he'd be fucked. Because he can't die. But he's also never going to be able to travel from island to island by himself. So he'd just be Jack, probably forever. He'd just be Jack. Are you guys talking about Robin Jinbei ships? Robin Jinbei ships? Okay, can we have an honest discussion? Honest discussion, which is that... Okay, obviously in the real world, right? Race has no bearing on anything. Like, it, it has no bearing on anything, right? Like, human race... Like, there's a difference... When I say that, I think that, like... In the world of One Piece... A human fishman romance is disgusting. That that's a that's because that's a fantasy universe. I'm not talking about human races. I'm saying that that's this like it's not the same thing, right? Like that's a literal fish, you know. That's fucking a fish. That's very different, right? I feel like it shouldn't be controversial to say that that would be really really weird, and we should look at Robin weird if she were to go fuck Jinbei. You know what I mean? I don't think that should be controversial because it's not the. Right? Like, it's di- it's not even... It's it's two different species is the thing. It's two different species. And I think everyone can agree that the two different species is very, very different. Right? It's two different species. It's not even about races. I feel like the One Piece world uses the word races incorrectly. Because they're not different races. They're different species. You know? It's actually... I, Right? Right? Mermaids, though? Mermaids are different. Come on, mermaids are different. A fishman is a whole fish. It looks like it's just a fish from top to bottom. I... <laughs> yeah, Dellinger. You guys are bringing up Dellinger. And look how that guy turned out, right? <laughs> Not exactly... <laughs> Not exactly... Uh, You don't exactly want more of him running around in the world, you know what I mean? Mar says, but the blood's the same? That's... <sighs> I'm not, it's not this, they're two different species. It has literally no relevance to, it's like, it's important for the symbolism, right? Different races, that's why, but like, it's not the same as the real world where, it's not the same as the real world. It's not the same as the real world. Like, if there was a fishman here in the real world right now, none of you guys would be lining up to fuck them. That's for sure. And I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. In my opinion. <laughs> and Jinbei, like, <laughs> like and I, I just don't know why you guys are so on board with, like, Jinbei fucking Robin. I feel like that's weird. Uh, Breezy 2, 2X is more, are you afraid, afraid of cancel culture and speaking on controversial shit? This is a joke controversial thing. This isn't actually, like, there's no such thing as fishmen, right? Um, I think fucking a fish or not fucking a fish is not something you would ever actually get canceled over. In my opinion, unless things have gone, unless society shifted in a certain direction and I missed it. Pen pal 1058 thanks for the seven. Mork, you've inspired my Dark Souls journey. Really? I'm actually really happy to hear that because, I don't know, like, you hear lots of stories of people being like, oh, I didn't want to try this, didn't want to try Dark Souls, etc. But then I finally tried it, and I never regretted it. I'm happy to hear that I got somebody to start that journey, right? I can be that person that I normally hear about other people talking about in their stories. Like, oh, somebody pushed me to start the Dark Souls journey. On Dark Souls 1 and just rang the bell after the Gargoyle fight. Any t- tips for first-time Souls player? Okay, so for me, in Dark Souls 1, the hardest boss in the game for me, the one that took the most time, was the Gargoyle fight. That's not because they are the hardest boss in the game. It's because I needed to learn how, like, it was, I'd say from there on, I got a better grasp of how to fight these bosses, basically. Um, Any tips? I would suggest, one, I would suggest trying to do as much blind as possible because you get a better experience that way. However, if you do get hard stuck at certain points, then, like, if you need to look something up, look it up. But I would suggest trying to, trying to go blind as much as possible. I will say I don't I one thing I did look up though was like cuz part of the reason I was really str- struggling against the gargoyles was because I didn't upgrade my weapons properly. What I did was um what you're supposed to do is uh upgrade your best weapon to plus 5 for the gargoyles fight if I remember plus 5 seems right. 
Um, you're supposed to upgrade your best weapon as much as possible, and you mainly use that. I was of the mindset that, like, okay, I picked up several weapons, so I should probably spread my upgrades across all. So I had a bunch of shitty weapons, basically, so none of them were effective. Um, so I do think, in my opinion, basically, I, I do think it's fair to look up, like, a little bit of just a smart strategy as to how to build things, because I would have not probably known how. I probably kept sp spreading the distribution of upgrades around and just had a terrible time playing the game. But I think looking up some things of, like, you know, what might be good if I'm, like, at least what would be good to, like, put points into or something like that. Because there's certain stats you could just put points into that are just dead stats, and basically. But, um, like, just get the, the the bare minimum understanding of kind of how you should be building or whatever the direction, and then take it from there yourself, in my opinion. Like, after a bit, I just kept doing what I wanted to do. Um, but I did need to understand that, okay, leveling deck, I don't need to level strength past a certain point if I'm doing a dex build, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, my tip is try and do blind as much as possible, but, uh, if you get hard stuck, then, you know, it's okay to look something up. Um, I had to look how to get to Blight Town. I would not have, or did the depths. I would have missed that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. And then don't, don't worry if you, if you die a lot, <laughs> that's just going to happen. Bruna Cabral. Thanks for the 10. Usopp sacrifice. Hold on. Fuck, went too far. Usopp's sacrifice will be the catalyst for the final war and getting the heroes in Marijua. His final words will be a declaration of the Celestial Dragons, the Straw Hats, the Pirates are coming, slash are here. Oh, shit, the Pirates are here. That'd be so cool. If Usopp said that, that would be so cool. If he does die, if that's going to happen. Let me th do a poll for chat. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, do you think Usopp will die? Um... I do think that uh, if he does die, I think it's got to be very, very, like, something really, like, that's such an important, that's such a huge dramatic, it's the big, the single biggest dramatic point Oda will ever have in the entire story of One Piece, right? So, wherever it comes in the story, it has to be a really powerful, pivotal turning point for major events in the plot, in my opinion. Yes, we got a lot of yes. Okay, it's a, it's a nice split. Nice split. Jolly D. Joe Star, thanks for the two. Species are classified by if they can breed or not. Wait, really? Is that what it is? That's not true, because lions and tigers can breed. That's not how it's defined. You can have cross... You, you can have uh, species... Um, uh, do I have to pull up the whole fucking genus family species chart? Let's see. Genus family species. Let's see. By the way, did that tell you guys what I've been watching lately? I think I might have told you guys this. I don't know. I might have talked about it. I forget. I'm, I feel like I haven't talked about it in a bit. But nature documentaries. Uh, I've been on a nature documentaries kick. But um, Netflix only has so many good ones. I'm trying to watch the um, the new Planet Earth. But looks like I'm going to need to... What's it streaming on? I think it's on Apple TV or some s stupid thing. Uh, Planet Earth 3... Streaming. You, it's not streaming on anything that anybody normally has. AMC Plus? Who the fuck has that? Wait, is that on Amazon? Am I crazy? Oh, no. You need AMC Plus. Uh, yeah. Anyway. um, But, yeah, this isn't correct. You can make some species breed. Oh, the offspring can't be sterile. Okay, so it's unknown then. Yeah, so then we're still on board here, right? Because we don't know if any... Uh, um, I'm still correct then, right? Right? Or at least there's nothing in the story that, that disproves what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I know I've missed a couple supers. I'm catching up. Give me a second. I got uh, distracted with certain talks. Thanks, Tom Tom. Tom Tom, sorry. Right? Like, we don't know if any, uh, any, uh, fishmen, human hybrids that have offspring of their own, right? Oh, shit. Kokoro's grandchild is one fourth fishman. Chimney? Shit. Okay, you guys are right. You guys are right. 
Okay, okay. So they are different races in One Piece then. Fuck. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are fishmen a species or race? One Piece. Let's see what they're referred to. Shit, they are... They are viewed as... Damn it. They're just another race. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What about giants? Giants are just a ra- Oh my god. Okay, the minx. It's a race. You can fuck minx? This is all- This is all very- Hmm. Alright. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. How do we know that Kokoro didn't... Hold on. Okay, hold on. Kokoro is a... is She's a mermaid, so she's a full-blooded mermaid, right? Is it confirmed that she married a human? Is that confirmed? Is that confirmed? I don't think that's confirmed. She met her human husband. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, the whole theory's gone. Okay, so they're all races. I think that that is... Okay, so now what I said is technically racist. I, I was technically being racist. All right. All right. Never mind. All right, I'm actually... I, I guess um, for fear of being canceled, I'm now on board with Robin fucking as many fish as she would like as many as her heart desires i guess that's yeah it's just happening now all right <laughs> for the record jinbei as a fishman is supposed to represent the indian race so just to be super clear we're all above board here i'm not talking about anything that's out of line <laughs> stay curious thanks for the two morge maybe robin wants some shark meat <laughs> you know the fun fact i'm pretty sure sharks have uh two dicks right is that am i crazy sharks have yeah sharks have two penises <laughs> look at this have you ever seen <laughs> you know how you type something into google and it gives you like an answer and like the first answer you get is kind of the one that you just trust right away um, so this is the first time I've seen the Google answer just be like, for example, sharks have two penises, sort of. What the fuck is sort of? This is the most legit answer that answer that Google can give me? Just a sort of? <laughs> okay. Um, Mahabit Sadegi, thanks for the two. The AI bot opinion on this issue should be great. I'm not getting, no. <laughs> we're not, involved, we're not bringing AI into this. Tala, thanks for the 279. Usopp isn't as important anymore as y'all think, to be honest. I mean, I, to me, I think that, like, Oda's just so inundated with characters that all of a sudden, randomly, a certain Straw Hat will be way more important for a given arc than they were before. Like, Sanji wasn't that important for hundreds of chapters, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, Kylan happens. Like, holy shit, we get 80 chapters devoted to Sanji for basically no fucking reason. <laughs> um... Like, it, it's good for his character, obviously, the stuff that we got there. And I like Whole Cake Island as an arc a lot, but I'm just saying, like, if you had pulled all the readers around chapter 700 or something and been like, hey, which Straw Hat seems like the most important to the story that they should get a huge arc devoted just to them, I don't think Sanji would win that poll, you know? Well, Sanji has a lot of Sanji. Like, he had a lot of fans at that point in time. Sanji fans, I think, have dwindled over time. So he might have won just out of, like, sheer popularity, but, like, if people were asked objectively, like, what do you think? Who do you think is the most important Straw Hat that would get just a whole arc or something like that developed to them, Sanji would have been a random choice, you know? Um, so it's kind of like Usopp hasn't been important in Wano, was obviously not present in Whole Cake Island, but if you go one arc before that, he was the most important Straw Hat in Dressrosa, you know? So these things vary from arc to arc. Like, it's easy to forget who is or isn't important, I think. And it seems like Usopp dying is 50-50, basically. To be fair, though, this also means, like, from what we just learned from this little discussion about race, right, 
this discussion that brought us all much closer together, I think, really was a step forward in terms of racial understanding, in my opinion. Um, I think it really reinforces that the people of One Piece are extremely racist, right? They're extremely racist because if you wander around America, you see, like, mixed... Like, mixed race is just so fucking common everywhere. Like, it's just not a thing anymore, right? It's just, you know, like, it's almost boring if you're just one race. I'm, I'm just Indian. It's kind of sad. But mixed race, people are everywhere. You can't, you can't walk down a street and not see, like, at least one person who's not just one race, you know? World of One Piece, like, how many fishmen, like, half fishmen, half humans do we know? Like, two, you know? It's, it's just, like, two. Uh, we've seen a lot of fucking islands, and we've only met two... Half fishmen, half humans. How many, how many half human, half minks have we ever met? And Chopper doesn't count, you know. None. It's crazy, you know. Like Chopper would actually probably be more accepted if fucking minks was more socially accepted in the One Piece world, you know. Because for him, it's like ah, oh, everyone's treating him like a monster. It's like, well, I wouldn't be such a monster if you guys just had sex with the animal people more, you know? Because then there'd be more of my type of people around. You get what I'm saying? It makes sense. And how many, like, half, uh, well, I guess half human, half giants, we can't really tell. But you get the, you get the point. You get the direction I'm going with, right? We don't really see, like, <laughs> we've been everywhere in the world, and we see almost no half and half, uh, we see no mixed races in the One Piece world. Why is that? You know? I think the racism issue in the One Piece world is a lot more significant than you would think then, huh? Tom Tom says, to be fair, the fishmen and minks are isolationist. That was, like, we kind of got the sense that fishmen are super rare in the One Piece world initially, but that was just an East Blue. Now you can't, like, you can't, it, it's hard to find places that don't have at least, like, some fishmen population, like, thrown in, like, you know, like, you, you got random ass fishmen just strewn around, like, one of Bonnie's fucking crewmates was a fishman on Sorbet Kingdom. Like, it's just... The fishmen are everywhere. Like, let's be real. And mermaids? Like, come on. What about mermaids? They don't want to... Like, I can understand no fishmen, but, like, there's not that many half-human, half-mermaids, you know? Um... Anyway. One Piece world is a lot darker than we thought, huh? All right. Not really an ostrich with one of the weirder supers I've ever seen. Thanks to the five. You've never wanted the gentle touch of Fisher Tiger's juicy lips. Couldn't be me. Um, <laughs> It's interesting that you picked Fisher Tiger and not like a mermaid. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to move on from that one. Eyes 96. Thanks for the five. Gorilla dicks last time and now shark dicks this time. What's next, Morge? What's next? I don't know why these last few streams have been in this direction. Maybe it's... <laughs> Maybe it's just because this is this is what happens when there's nothing that crazy going on in the manga. Uh, that, this is when the streams go kind of off the rails. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Tala, thanks for the 279. You're too smart for how ass your Sanji takes are. What did I say about Sanji? I, I'm not saying that Sanji's not important. I understand Sanji's very important. I'm just saying that, like, most people wouldn't have selected him prior to Whole Cake Island as being... It was in response to the Usopp comment, like, Usopp's not important enough to get a major... Uh, major character moment or major plot moment or major arc or something like that. I'm like, you could have said the same thing about Sanji, you know, to 400 chapters ago or 300 chapters ago. Not that Sanji's not important, but it's just like, it wasn't as though, I don't think anybody was guessing that Sanji's going to be having this huge pivotal storyline story arc that shapes basically the entire four versus four Yonko saga. You know what I mean? But we got that. It's not saying he's not important. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. I'm like, it's to it's to it's to suggest that Usopp is just Usopp is just as important as Sanji is what I'm saying, right? In the grand scheme of things, just because some strides don't get a, some story time for certain arcs doesn't mean that that's not going to be turned around, you know, within um, another arc or two. Like if you went to like if you're reading Dressrosa when Sanji and the other strides got shipped off, right? Most people at that point in time we're not predicting like if you can go back and look at the discussion then most people didn't think that oh that half of the crew is then going to get their own arc after dressrosa because this half of the crew got their arc in dressrosa it was just like oh shit oda's sidelining these other characters you get what i'm saying 
Um, so you could say the same thing about Usopp right now. It's like, oh, Usopp didn't do anything. He wasn't in Whole Cake Island. He didn't do that much in Wano. You know what? He's not important anymore. It's like, no, Usopp was the most important straw hat in Dressrosa. He was the most important straw hat in, I mean, outside of Robin, but in Water 7 and any Sabi, you know? He was extremely important in Thriller Bark. He's generally a very, very important straw hat in the grand scheme of things, you know? Um, my point is basically Sanji, Usopp, really the East Blue 5 are all roughly equally important at the end of the day, Luffy being the exception. But um, if Sanji can get a storyline as significant as Whole Cake Island, there's no reason that Usopp couldn't get something as significant over the final saga. James Yang, welcome to the Pirate King tier. You are in luck because the Pirate King podcast for this uh, this month came out just last week. Yeah, so there's a full hour and 20 minute long podcast for you to check out. Covers a lot of topics, One Piece stuff, other manga, other TV series, comparing One Piece to other manga, other TV, etc. Random stuff about video games, etc. too. So go check that out if you get a chance. Alright, Stormy says most important in Dressrosa. Yeah, Usopp was the most important strad in Dressrosa. Easy. Because his competition was just, I mean, you could, like, okay, Luffy's always Luffy. So we never include Luffy because Luffy's ultimately the most important in any given arc. Like, he's just the protagonist. He's the one who solves the conflict, right? So I never count Luffy when I'm like, okay, this Straw Hat was the most important in this arc, right? Even if you go to Whole Cake Island, you could argue that ultimately the climax of Whole Cake Island was more about Luffy than Sanji. It it, it really was. Like, people are generally going to talk about Luffy versus Katakuri more than Sanji baking the cake at the end of the day, right? Um, I mean, that doesn't make Luffy more important than Sanji, that arc. But I'm saying, like, Luffy's always either number one or tied for number one with somebody else, right? So we set Luffy aside. In Dressrosa, most important strat, like, you've got Usopp, Frankie, Robin, Zoro. <laughs> These other three characters did basically nothing the entire arc. Zoro beat Pika, which was a flashy moment, but the entire fucking story of Dressrosa, Usopp was the only person who actually had a genuine character arc over the course of it. Got, like, <laughs> if you don't think Usopp is the most important strat uh, in Dressrosa, I suggest you go to Dressrosa, take a vacation over there, and tell me whose fucking statue you see outside their front door, all right? It's very clear, like, Dressrosa was uh, basically a top three most important Usopp arc in the entire story. Usopp was probably as important in Dressrosa as Zoro was in Wano, which is basically to say it's not like he dominated the arc like Sanji did, but he was clearly of an elevated importance in Dressrosa compared to the rest of the Straw Hats. So, like, I'd compare it more to Zoro and Wano. <clears throat> Zoro more important than Usopp. Zoro stopped Fujitora. Okay, let's put it this way. Dressrosa, as a kingdom, suffered under... <laughs> under Doflamingo. They suffered under this phenomenon where their entire fucking population that happened to rebel try to speak out tried to have any sort of free will whatsoever was turned into a toy and stripped away from history and forgotten forever right the entire fucking concept of dressrosa and the dystopia that it is is built around resolving the sugar conflict right Usopp is the one that did that. Usopp, there's a reason Usopp was the savior of Dressrosa, literally the savior of the entire island. They all view him as the savior of the island. And do you guys know why the Straw Hat Grand Fleet exists? Who knows why the Straw Hat Grand Fleet exists? Somebody tell me why the Straw Hat Grand Fleet exists. Tell me right now. Tell me why the Straw Hat Grand Fleet exists. Tell me who had the most stars uh, handed out as part of the survival game in Dressrosa. Who had the most stars? Why do we have the Straw Hat Grand Fleet? Why is there a statue of Usopp built in Dressrosa? Like, are you guys... Like, I, I actually don't know if people are trolling at this point, but Usopp in Dressrosa was very clearly the most important straw hat, and it wasn't really close. Tala, thanks for 279. Argue with Robin. She told us who's most important. I don't even know what to say, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not knocking Sanji. I'm saying, like, I'm saying Usopp is, a <laughs> the initial comment was just, Usopp's not important enough to, like, for his death to be, like, a pivotal moment in the story. It's like, dude, like, he's a very important straw hat. If you want to say Sanji's slightly more important, that's fine, but that's, that's really not the discussion. It's just, is he important enough in the story 
Yes, there have been several arcs where he's been the most important straw hat. He's generally the straw that Oda goes to the most frequently for significant character arcs. Um, he's the most human straw hat. He's already the straw that Oda's done the most dramatic conflicts about in general across the start of One Piece to, to now. Um, if you don't think he's more important than Sanji, that's fine. If you don't think he's more important than Zoro, that's fine. But he's in the same ballpark as them. Like, the entire East Blue Five are of elevated importance. I'm missing supers from nine from earlier. Okay, let me take a look. Let me go back. Um, okay, I do, I do, I do. Oh, shit. I have several missing supers. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. Um... Dick so small I piss on my balls. PX0 responds to a command from Dragon on Kamabaka Kingdom. Vega tells Dragon in their flashback, don't forget the true mission. Dragon is the is the one truly on top of the pacifista chain of commands. He'll set them for... Wait, what? Hmm. Oh, shit. That is an interesting point. But then PX0 fucked off and did his own thing. Well, but still, that's an interesting point. The true mission. Yeah, I guess that little thread that was dropped at the beginning of Egghead still has to be picked up. I honestly forgot about the discussion between Vegapunk and Dragon. Okay, I don't know about him being on top of the Pacifista chain, chain but that is a really interesting point. Damn, that would be cool, because then they could fight the world government with an army of Kumas on their side. And then in that way, Kumas sacrifice, right? To have, like, that would be so symbolic that Kumas sacrifice, like him choosing to make himself a science experiment, ultimately is used in the rebellion against the world government. That'd be fucking awesome. I really like that idea. Dick so small, I piss on my balls. Big props to you if that turns out to be correct. Var PM, thanks for the two. Morge, that tendency of SHOC came from Mr. One. That's, I think that that's just their devil fruits though. Their their tendencies from what we were told were, um, was uh, uh, from their original DNA, like the not the green fluid on their, their arms, at least as far as I understand. Like Hancock's acting like Hancock, you know? Um, but maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe that'll get clarified. It is more similar to Mr. One for sure than Mihawk. Tom, Tom, thanks for the five. Maybe Frankie makes what the pacifista were meant to be protectors of the weak. It would be full circle with his battle. Frankie's being used for, for violence. So I always felt like Frankie works better as a shipbuilder at the end of the day. I wouldn't like him making pacifista is right up his alley. He's a cyborg himself, but I always felt like the battle Frankie's coming full circle would be him, him building Pluton, but then Pluton being actually used to uh, do good, bring pre peace to the world by taking on the world government. Sean Easton, thanks for the five. Luffy lives forever and sails the Astral Sea. Oh, yeah, we got to throw in space. No, we threw in space. Um, and then goes to space? Question mark? Um... Also, aren't the Celestial Dragons kind of slaves, too? Can't go live with peasants or act out of turn too much. No, because they can't... That's not the same. That's more like they just get socially shunned, right? They lose their... Like, they can do that if they want to. They just lose Celestial Dragon rights, and then people will be mean to them down down there like they were to the Doflamingo family. Um, but they're allowed to do whatever they want. Like, Celestial Dragons can go down to Earth whenever they want. They can wander around take whatever they want, including people if they so choose. Like, they can just take an island and make it their hunting competition if they so choose. They can do whatever they want. Um, I don't think those are they're slaves in that sense. They just can't choose to be... Um, like, they, they can't choose to be a normal person, I guess. But... They, lit like, they can't choose to be a normal person and still get Celestial Dragon rights. But they can choose to be a normal person if they so if they so please. So there's nothing they really can't do. Um, they just can't do the one thing that's inconsistent with celestial dragon status, which is like like literally choosing to be a normal person. If you choose to be a normal person, you don't get celestial dragon rights anymore. But you're not a slave because you can still choose to be that normal person. It would just kind of suck for you. Silver, thanks. Luffy tries to sail by himself and dies of drowning. Yet yeah, look back at the the Jack panel. I think I pulled that up in, in uh, response to that. I think I'm caught up to supers now. So thank you for pointing that out. I thought I was fully caught up. My bad. All right. Let's take a look here. <laughs> I've gotten used to Dick So Small's name just because he pops up in chat so often. All right. Let's talk about Zoro. Okay, wait, let me catch a... So, previously, this was brought up by who? This was brought up by... Um, 
who brought up okay the water god brought up robin reopening the library of ohara and teaching the next generation i like that idea a lot i'm gonna throw throw that down at the end we'll vote on what seems the best um reopens library of ohara to spread knowledge to the future you said nami takes care of kids that's a little vague to me i don't know what that means frankie equal new vegapunk eh. he's not really a vegapunk is the thing like he he really is a shipwright at at his core when it comes to himself he's a cyborg type mechanic right artificial human enhancements but what he likes doing is building ships that's his hobby he just applies that to himself to for combat purposes um yeah let's say Usopp dies that's a possibility dies question mark okay all right let's get some let's get some ideas in here yeah let me ask because Usopp dying was 50 50 split let me ask about Luffy dying does Luffy die in the end this is also a 50 50 split <laughs> damn Damn, damn. This is crazy. So, like, the... People's feelings on Luffy dying, Usopp dying... It really is as divisive as it gets... I'll give it a second, but it, it basically is 50-50. It doesn't really matter which one wins. I was just curious what the, the sentiments are. Zoro, I feel like he would just fuck off and drink and, like, have a good time. Like, the characters that Zoro is kind of molded after, you know, he's not exactly like either one of them, but he's... You know, he's got his similarities. Um, Rayleigh and Mihawk, right? I feel like with both of them, once they're free to do their spare time shit, they just, <laughs> they just travel around, you know, drifting about here and there. Uh, Mihawk is more so looking to get some fights in, you know, some challenges in. Rayleigh is more content to not fight if he doesn't, have to he said he hadn't raised a sword in years um but you know really is out just drinking chilling doing whatever mihawk also just sailing the seas whatever mihawk is a bit older than really though or younger than really though so mihawk's probably still itching to to fight occasionally once in a while which is makes sense um but i feel like that fits with zoro as well right am i wrong like just back to back to Wandering, chilling, wandering slash chilling slash drinking swordsman. Is that not right? I think that fits. Shivi Giroti asked more. Do you think Zora might get the immortality surgery instead? Oh, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to see him get that. He has had way more themes of both death and defeating death, whereas it makes more sense for Luffy to die because of his lifespan. I think I wouldn't like that just because I like the idea that Zoro is this character that um, he, like, death is a very real <laughs> challenge for, like, you know, the the fight against King itself. Like, he's get, he's opening himself up to, to just recklessly dying and being at death's door for the sake of it. And that I think that's a consistent part of his character throughout the story. Um, I don't want to have that taken away from him and now he's just a super super natural unkillable swordsman he would be the best swordsman of all time forever pretty much going down in history forever just getting <laughs> stronger and stronger probably no one can kill him i think that that would hurt a lot of his character i also feel like with luffy i don't like i don't like the idea of immort immortal luffy either but um i think with luffy i've also started just open up my idea more to like He's already so many of these special magical things, like this prophecy chosen one possibly, Joy Boy reincarnated or something like that, or at least like he's Nika. 
um reborn he's the sun god you know the 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 answer to the will of d across 800 years like luffy already feels like this this transcend he's becoming this sort of transcendent sort of figure at this point i wouldn't want to see him become immortal i would rather see law have to use the surgery in some manner like maybe resurrecting him after a brief moment where it seems he might have died or something i don't know but um immortal on top of all of that it just makes luffy i don't know just feels so far removed from like that little kid that just like left in chapter one i don't know all right um zoro put a baby in nami <laughs> zoro gonna chill in wano with hiori i don't think it's with hiori come on they those two have the worst chemistry i think zoro and hiori have maybe the worst chemistry i've ever read in a shonen manga ever like a romance there's just nothing there there's nothing there nothing was ever developed it never felt like their two personalities really produced any sort of interesting sparks or interactions or anything like that like zoro tashigi i think is a great little dynamic if you want to push a um a romance on zoro akash panda thanks for the five i feel bad for the guy who wants to be world's strongest swordsman after zoro Forget beating Zoro, he'll have to find Zoro first. Good luck. <laughs> Zoro and Perona. Yeah, even Zoro and Perona. Like, there's something fun with those dynamics, you know? Like, with Hiyori, she's just kind of a fangirl of Zoro almost right... Like, she's just a fangirl of Zoro right away. But Zoro's also not really interested. And, like, he doesn't really give anything back in that sort of... Like, there's just nothing there like there's not like in terms of conversations that they have that's just not really a thing in terms of comedy there's not really anything there's not really any sort of conflict or little sparks or anything like that with zoro tashigi it's just fun to see them like bicker to a degree and uh like clearly they have some level of feelings towards each other that's the dynamics are more fun in my opinion to see whereas zoro hiyori it's just it's really bland at least like luffy hancock which is also sort of like a hero worship situation it's there's a lot of comedy that comes out of it because it's so over the top like what hancock wants to do for luffy is so over the top um the way she takes every little thing he does as a sign of his love for her is so over the top and like luffy's way of sort of shooting her down is so hilariously blunt like there's a lot of comedy that comes out of it which makes it more enjoyable zoro hiyori there really is nothing it's just it's 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 bizarre that it even existed in the story just doesn't make sense to me um (laughs) <laughs> Immersion says it's funny how he spent more time with Perona than the Straw Hats. I think Zoro and Perona is low key a good ship, in my opinion, if we're gonna throw that out there. Um Sibling dynamic, I can't see them as a couple. Says B. Yeah, I, I guess. Um I mean there's that fine line between like Oh, is this supposed to be just like platonic uh these two they've got like sibling energy bickering, or like, oh, is this like um like bickering masking an author's intent for romantic tension i guess basically i don't know um i don't know if, o- if oda's ever even gonna like the thing is like i never thought that oda would go hard on a ship ever in the story until he did commit to sanji pudding like oda committed to sanji pudding like the arc literally ends with sanji and pudding kissing goodbye i never thought i'd see that in a one piece arc for a straw hat <laughs> liquid richard asked did mihawk and zoro tag team perona during the time skip no dude i i really don't think so <laughs> oof thanks for the two would sanji simp for a girl zoro for girl zoro if ivankov got him no i don't think so i don't think so um let's move on let's move on well i guess we want to throw in the ships right some okay do okay let's ask this well do we have to i don't think we have to right like i don't think we, i because I, this can still be true right does anybody have anything any other idea for zoro is he gonna be like a dojo master or something i can't really imagine that i feel like this just fits him right
Anything else for Zoro? I guess not. Luffy times nine. I mean, I think I've said this before, and people get upset with this or whatever, but because uh, I think people are predisposed to Luffy Hancock, I think Luffy Nami is a perfectly good uh, romance, in my opinion. I think those two characters have phenomenal chemistry. If you were to ask me, like, among the Straw Hats, which ones I like just seeing individual scenes of Luffy with, like, just because the dynamic is so good. Um, Luffy Zoro is always great, and Luffy Nami is always great. I loved Whole Cake the middle section quite a bit in the seducing woods when luffy like from the seducing woods through getting captured um where it was just luffy and nami for a period of time because it's been a long time since that happened i think luffy and nami can get drowned out when it's a lot of characters because then nami's kind of just this yelling angry person who's upset with luffy's antics when it's like you know luffy's being childish and like nami's kind of taking charge of the crew um, but when it's just Luffy and Nami together and they get to actually just interact and go through experiences together and like, you know, you see Skypea, um, you know, Whole Cake Island, like just getting time in a given arc, like Water 7, um, even if it's just for a couple chapters, I think usually that's really good because they're such, uh, in, in those sort of scenarios, it, Oda doesn't just default to oh, Luffy being dumb and Nami beating him up. That does still happen. But then lots of times you see the more serious side of Luffy and Luffy's having to... Like, you, you see both of their strengths, like Nami's logic taking over in certain scenarios, but then Luffy having to actually uh, fight or get serious in certain scenarios. And I think that they're dynamic. Um, and he brings a certain sort of, uh, like, uh, moral direction or righteousness sometimes that, not, that Nami can overlook. So I think that or even emotional intelligence. I think that they've got a very, very well-developed uh, two-person dynamic. And, like, just those two characters do work really, really well with each other in isolation. Um, and then Luffy Zoro is obviously, like, always a fun dynamic to see, but that's usually for battle contexts, whereas I think Luffy Nami is a really good, like, adventure context just to have those two characters. So I've always felt like um, if Luffy were to have a romance with anybody, I feel like Nami is the best setup character for him in that situation. I would point to, what is it? Which What's the one? Strong World. Yeah, that's the One Piece movie that Oda wrote, which is um, uh, the only time that we really get a hint at romance, for, like a genuine hint at romance among the crew, and that was Luffy Nami based. Oof, thanks for the two. Would Morge simp for Girl Zoro if Ivankov got him? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say no. Those are just my thoughts. I understand that the Luffy Hancock faction is very, very strong and very adamant. There's also a weird Luffy Vivi faction, even though they <laughs> haven't interacted in God knows how long, but I don't know. <clears throat> okay, moving on. What are we saying for Nami? I kind of want to do this without ships, if possible. The only one I'll write in is Sanji, just because it's a confirmed ship, right? Like, Sanji and Pudding is a thing. Wait, she reopens Library of Ohara? Okay, okay. But what island is she reopening this shit at? Because Ohara doesn't exist anymore. Right? Or people are pushing for Nami times Vivi. Okay, we don't need to get into the ships. I think that that was a bad idea. I'm going to do it for Sanji just because Sanji has, like, an established romance. Like, that exists. Wait, Usopp does too, though. Like, we can't... Like, Usopp Kaya is not a made-up thing. That that exists, right? Like, come on. That, Kaya is his girl, right? Dies or goes home to marry Kaya. Let's say that. I don't know. Ohara does exist. It's still it's just deserted. Okay, I guess so. Okay, okay. Would not would Robin want to go back there? It's kind of a sad place to go back to. The library does already exist in Elbaf. Yeah. So does she go to Elbaf? 
Sean Easton, thanks for the five. I've always loved the headcanon that the reason why Sanji grows strong is because he's fighting Luffy every night to keep the food safe. Yeah, that is a funny one. <laughs> that is a funny one. Nami owns a tangerine farm? That fits. Yeah. Starts a tangerine farm. I like the I like the tangerine farm idea. Um it's from Edward Edwin Solis. I'm just gonna say it reopens the library of O'Hara on some island. Okay, what about Frankie? Does he go back to Water Seven? What does he do? Soul Killer says more your opinion on Boa times Zoro. That is a really random ship. Community says, the one thing I need with Robin is her having a daughter so she can be the mother that she wanted her entire life. Oh, that's sweet. That's a, yeah, I wonder how many... Uh, I wonder if Oda does a like a 20 years later type thing and we see some of the strats with kids. I don't know. Nami adopts kids. I don't know. Um, maybe, yeah. I don't know. We can put it down. Yeah, let's go back to Fra oh, Frankie goes back to the Frankie family. That'd be great. Goes back to Frankie family. He's so different now, though, is the thing. Like, they wouldn't even recognize him. I'm not saying, like, even physically and visually, but, like, as a character, he's not even close to the type of character he was when he was part of the Frankie family. He's a totally different person. He's just... <laughs> he's a... I, I think out of all of the Straw Hats, in my opinion, Frankie has gone through the most extreme flanderization. I think. Um, yeah, it's, it would just be really weird. Like, I can't imagine this Frankie with the Frankie family again. He's just a very different personality at this point in time. I've, I've always liked Frankie Robin, personally. I've always liked the idea of Frankie Robin, personally. Um, I just felt like, uh, over the course of Water 7 and East Lobby, I think that their their character dynamic really really uh I, I think that like frankie and robin their character dynamic was the most essential to because they were the two pivotal characters of um of of those two storylines in terms of having character arcs right i think the way that their two character arcs and like them growing through each other played out over that made it a very very powerful connection over the story close story, <laughs> over the course of that storyline um yeah but i mean i can't deny like just gotten a lot of little uh hints that at least law and robin seem to enjoy each other's company you know that t tends to write them in random scenes together sleeping danger thank you frankie and iceberg turn water seven into a boat oh shit that'd be cool Right? Because that was what the goal was initially, right? Sanji, the all-blue restaurant. Fucking duh. Starts an all-blue... That would be great. That would be so cool. I like that idea a lot. Starts the all-blue restaurant. <laughs> you know how funny it'd be? Like, there's just this restaurant. Best restaurant in the world. And, uh... The owner <laughs> is just... Ra like... People show up there just to eat some really good food, right? And the owner is just randomly, like, one of the, <laughs> like, ten strongest characters on the entire planet. Like, the owner's just ran- Like, it's basically like the bar is run by a Yonko. <laughs> or the, the restaurant is just run by a Yonko. It'd be so bizarre. It'd be funny. And Mary's Pudding? Let's throw that in. Um... These are the, again, these are the only two that I'm going to throw in potential romantic interests because these are practical, like, Sanji Pudding is a thing that happened, right? Usopp Kaya seemed like it was a thing that was just not explicit. AJA Acoline says, honestly, that's how Zeph is. Yeah, but that's like East Blue. Like, Zeph is a, you know, Zeph couldn't even beat Don Krieg, right? Sanji's, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Prime Zeph was something, but like, Zeph at that point in time, he couldn't really defend the restaurant against, you know, uh, Don Krieg or anything like that. Um, 
Yeah, this would be like if a restaurant's being run by a dude that can just beat up a Navy admiral. I assume Sanji will be at that point at the end of the story. Fingers crossed, right? Uh, Tom, Tom, thanks for the five. What do you think are the most awkward topics to bring up on the Sunny? For example, Frankie be beating the shit out of Usopp. Love your content. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I don't think that's an awkward topic because um, it would be if that was just something that happened and then Frankie and Usopp never resolved it. Um, but Frankie and Usopp, the first, like when Usopp left the crew, the first straw hat that he actually reconnected with and kind of built himself back up um, through interacting with was Frankie. Obviously, Frankie wasn't a straw hat at that point in time, but um, the first character that is now a straw hat, right? Usopp and Frankie have already un come to understand each other, gone through, you know, the, their... Um, their point of moving past that, right? Like they, they went through their growth phase where they both came to came to an understanding. They both went through an experience that was much bigger than what came before. Um, I don't think that's an awkward point of discussion anymore because it's just, that was their problem that they basically, like that was the first thing that Oda, man, the character, that, the way Oda wrote the character relationships over the course of Water 7 and Isabi is phenomenal. Be, like between, because the three characters that were most important in terms of growing were, Usopp, Frankie, and Robin, and Oda really connected how their storylines played off of each other so phenomenally well, and how their each of their respective arcs played off of each other, because like Usopp went through that thing, and then the first person he's re like he's interacting with afterwards is Frankie, and then we get that's when we get to see the other side of Frankie and learn about this, um, this hidden side of him that's actually much more likable, and from there Frankie's arc can kind of begin because Frankie. And part of what makes us like Frankie to begin with is him helping Usopp get over what happened, like learn and realize where he was wrong um, by seeing what actually the situation was with the Mary. Then we can kind of see them work as a duo from then on to try and help Robin. And then Usopp gets his scenes with Robin on the sea train. Frankie gets his scenes with Robin uh, afterwards, also on the sea train through the rest of Fanny's lobby. It's really, really, really well done how all three of those just uh, connect. Luffy, of course. Luffy, of course. I think Luffy, I, I kind of take Luffy for granted, but that was, out of all the arcs in One Piece, Water 7 and Isabi was the one that he grew the most in as well. Uh, I still think Water 7 and Isabi, for me, it's the best that One Piece gets, for me personally. Um, but I totally understand people saying, like, Marine Ford or something like that. But, um, yeah, I just think the character writing and the character dynamics there were the best. All right, uh, let's say Chopper. Chopper's a weird one. I feel like Chopper could just go back to Drum Kingdom, right? Like, goes back to Drum Kingdom. But I feel I feel like the place that he would be happiest would be Zo, Just because Chopper, they're really... Everyone there is like him. He, like, Drum Kingdom, he would be treated right. They wouldn't treat him like a monster anymore. But it's got to feel good just being on a place that everybody else is like. Like, you know, he doesn't have to feel like he's just this misfit in a sense that everybody else is human he's the only um half human half reindeer combo i think he would be really happy on zo and the thing is that when we had the zo arc they really treated chopper like a king there like because he saved all of them you know like that's why if you go back and look at chopper and zo like he's wearing um all these robes and stuff they put him on such an exalted pedestal that's got to feel so i wish we'd actually almost got to gotten to delve a bit deeper into that because that's got to be the first time in chopper's life that he would have been so welcomed and so uh like not just accepted but kind of celebrated by you know a whole society because the straw hats are obviously his friends but to finally show up at an island and it's like he's not the weird looking one in the crew you know he's not um He's not having to hide his appearance or anything like that around other... I mean, he doesn't do that anyway, but, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, he shows up and he's basically, like, the celebrity. He's, like, the one out of the entire crew that they all like the most, that, that fits in the best. That must have felt really, really cool for him. We just didn't really get to get any insight because um, it just, I guess, was deemed not important to look at it from Chopper's perspective. But, uh, you know, it's cool to think about, right? No, he doesn't have to marry Carrot. That's... <laughs> He's like a literally a big brother figure to Carrot. That was the point, right? Uh, turns Zun oh Chopper turns Zunisha into walking hospital. Says Shmidi G, or goes back to Zo, makes it a walking hospital. I love that idea. It's very similar to 
That's a great idea. And Zoe can probably, Zunisha can probably get around pretty quick if it wanted to. Daniel says, would, Z would Zunisha be alive? End of story. I don't know. Yeah, shit. At least wherever the minks are, I think Chopper could go back there. Hudson says, bro, Brooke is in the crew of Walking Corpse. Yeah, Brooke obviously becomes weirder, but like, Brooke is never, ex <laughs> like, Brooke was already a normal person. You know, like, he experienced a normal life. Like, everything that Brooke's going through right now, it's just, it's bonus, right? Yeah, it's weird he's walking around as just, like, skeleton man, right? But it's not like he's grown up ostracized or something because of that, right? He was a normal dude who had, like, a normal life. Um, <laughs> he was a musician. He was a human, right? Like, he, he didn't go through what Chopper did, right? Yeah, it sucks that he's uh, living the way he is now, but he died, you know? This is... <laughs> he should technically be dead, so this is better than that, right? Um, Brooke, I don't, th I've never gotten the sense that Brooke feels any sort of way about the fact that he's all bones. In fact, like, he really likes, like, for him, this is fun and funny, right? This is, like, a fun quirk to his, uh, to his persona now. He welcomes that. For Chopper, that was something that he struggled with all of his life. That was the, the main source of, of trauma and internal conflict for him from the moment that he ate that, ate that devil fruit onwards. Oof says, Chopper banging a mink is ironically bestiality. Didn't we cover this? Isn't, aren't they all the same race, right? So it's not, uh, aren't we all, or not the same race, aren't we all the same species, so it's not bestiality, right? So I think we're, I think we're fine, right? We covered this. Wait, no, but the reindeer half of Chopper, you're saying the minx would be, oh my god, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, if a mink ba bang Chopper, it would technically be 50% bestiality, because Chopper is, half of him is not, uh, is not human. I would never have thought about it like that, but you are definitely right. Okay, Chopper needs to find himself a nice gifter girl. He needs to find a gifter. That's what Chopper needs to find. Right? I think a gifter is basically where he's kind of at. About the same thing, right? Sorry, okay, so Jinbei is... Jinbei is a hard... I feel like Jinbei, there's nothing in particular that needs to fit for him. Because um, there's not a location necessarily that Jinbei would be going back to. Because from what's been suggested, once the dawn of the world is brought... Like, the whole point is the fishmen don't want to have to live on Fishman Island anymore. The whole point is that they want to be able to go up, be around and about in the world, enjoy the light of the sun, yada, yada, yada. So, Fishman Island, Jinbei wouldn't be confined to that bubble anymore. Um, oh, wait! Hold on. Fun fact. Wait, one second. This is really important. Who was around for that stream where we couldn't figure out how to kill Jinbei? Who was around for that stream? Because I thought about it. I was like, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. I've got to be able to kill Jinbei. For those of you who don't know, a little while ago, I did maybe one of the best streams in this channel's history. It was a lot of fun. I suggest you check out the VOD. It was trying to figure out a way to kill all of the Straw Hats. Like, could I, as a person... If I had prep time and a little bit of money, find a way to kill all of the Straw Hats, right? Just me as a normal human being, right? And we figured out a way that was like 80% sure to kill each Straw Hat probably, I would say. Except Jinbei, man. Jinbei was difficult. But I figured something out. Figured it out. All right. Um, figured something out. Uh, let me show you guys. Didn't like having that little loose end. I was like, man, what if hypothetically like our entire world got... Uh, for some reason, or I guess just me, for some reason, imagine if I got isekai to the One Piece universe or something like that, and the Straw Hats are just going crazy, and, like, we need somebody to deal with them, and it's, like, it's obviously going to come down to me. Uh, <laughs> so, if that were to happen, then uh, what would I do in that scenario, right? I wouldn't be able to stop Jinbei. I can't tell them, like, hey, I can take out all the Straw Hats except Jinbei. That's not going to be, it's not going to work, because then... You know, the whole plan falls apart. But I figured something out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, so Jinbei does have a weakness. He does have a weakness. Okay. It is... What chapter is this? Ah, I guess I can look at it here. Okay. So it's... Uh, it's this cover story. Check this out. It's this cover story. All right. Okay, so Jinbei finds this uh, 
this lost sea kitten thing. All right. He finds this lost sea kitten thing. And uh, he clearly tries to help this lost sea kitten thing. All right. Um, yeah. So Jinbei, okay, it's, it's not a very complicated plan. Um, I'm not going to take too much time to explain this. <laughs> All right. But the point is that clearly Jinbei has a, 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 a what do you call? It's a, there's a plan A and a plan B, all right? Jinbei has a soft spot for, I guess, lost sea cat type things or something like that, right? He's just a nice guy, okay? So while Jinbei's traveling, swimming around the ocean or whatever, right? He runs into this sea cat, then uh, <laughs> um, you, obviously he'll try and help it. And so the sea cat will get real close to be like, hey, here's what happened to me. And then here's the plot twist, all right? You guys are never going to guess. Uh, <laughs> The sea cat's actually a bomb, and uh, the, <laughs> the bomb would go off and kill him. It is much like a lot of the other strats who were also killed by bombs, but um, yeah, that's the <laughs> the sea cat was forced to eat a bunch of TNT, so I blow up the sea cat. The backup, all right, is um, the backup is this. Where's the backup? Backup, 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 backup. So there's a poneglyph. Okay, okay, okay. So, um. Oh no, I, I I misremembered this wrong. For some reason, I thought that Jinbei found a poneglyph, but instead he was gifted a poneglyph. I guess I can't read the Japanese here. Nah, never mind. I was thinking like bombs inside a poneglyph, but that wouldn't work. Um, but the sea cat. Tell me the sea cat wouldn't work, right? Put bombs inside the sea cat. Make the sea cat blow up. All right. So we got Jinbei too. It just took a bit, but. That's what the week of, of planning is for. That's what the week of prep time is for, right? I'm allowed to have a little extra time. All right, anyway, instead of thinking about how to kill Jinbei, you sick weirdos, let's talk about what happens to him after the Straw Hats save the world and he can live happily ever after. What would he be doing? Soul Killer says more. Do you think you can kill Kaido? No, the Straw Hats are the only characters that are, like, killable. Most strong characters in the story are <laughs> very, very capable. Um, like, they don't have... The Strats are our protagonists, so we follow them for literally a thousand plus chapters. So, and we get to see them in all of their little vulnerable moments, their goofy moments, their slip ups, their mistakes, yada yada. Um, it's like, like we, we fucking watched Zoro, <laughs> like post time skip Zoro, trained by Mihawk Zoro, get taken out by random sleeping gas, uh, by the fucking Yeti Cool Brothers, you know? Like, we kind of know the shit that will work on them and not work on them, right? We've seen them in so many scenarios. Can't say the same about, like, Kaido or or Mihawk or something. Like, we don't know what their little weakness would be, you know? Uh, by the way, I forgot about Zoro and the Sleeping Gas. <laughs> uh, that's, that's also something that we could throw in if needed, you know? Make the plan a little bit more guaranteed. Um... Sleeping Danger asks, could I kill Law? Could I kill Law? Law is very difficult because Law is very smart. See, Law is the type of character that thinks up of these plans to kill other people. Um, could I kill Law? Could I kill Law? I don't think... I think Law would be really difficult to kill. Particularly because Law is also a doctor. So, like, you need to kill him, kill him. Otherwise, he can fix his, himself in a variety of ways, I assume, right? So you only get one real good shot at it. I don't know how I'd kill Law. I don't know. Um, I think it might involve... Like, a dead polar bear... I'd have to hunt down a polar bear, which would be difficult for me. I think something like a, I, if I had a, if I could get my hands on, I guess I could buy a dead polar bear. If I could get my hands on like a dead polar bear and an orange jumpsuit, I think I got a shot. Um, no, it's it's too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. Ricky Servant says next stream try to kill Supernova. Oh, we can see about that. We can see about that. Because I did have a lot of fun. Make another stream on which other characters you can kill. Yeah, okay, we, we can do that one again. Because that was the most fun stream idea in, like, I, I don't even know how long. I had a lot of fun doing that one. 
Um, even if I had like a dead Beppo, like to to bait him with, I think he'd just be too care. Like it would be really really hard to get him. I can't just be like, oh, I'll just explode a dead Beppo because I feel like Law would just be careful or something. And if the explosion doesn't kill him outright, which it might not, he can heal himself. It's too difficult. Talos says a bomb's not working this time. Law took a Thunder Bagua. Yeah, I, I don't think I can kill Law, man. I don't know if I can even kill Jinbei with a bomb. I don't think I can kill Jinbei with a bomb. Like, the characters that we talked about killing with bombs were, like, Usopp, Robin. Usopp, I don't think I could kill with a bomb, to be honest. No, Usopp would be... We'd be able to get him vulnerable, at least, and then maybe kill him off some other way. Robin, I think I could probably kill with a bomb. She's not... She's never been, like, a damage tank. Mahavid Zadeki, thanks for the five. Usopp will become a mythical Zoan devil fruit model god Usopp. Zoro will develop... I'm not going to put that down. Zoro will develop Yontoryu and teach his dojo. I don't think Zoro's a teacher type. I don't think he's, uh, like... The only character he ever kind of taught was Momonosuke. And I don't think he even taught him that much. It was just, do this, do Sanachi. I don't think Zoro's interested in teaching kids, you know? Yokai Gota says, Morge, you could purchase Mother Flame from York. No, you need too much money to do that. So if you didn't watch that stream, the rule was basically, I'm only allowed to spend as much money as their bounty is worth. Jinbei's bounty. Well, Jinbei's a billion berry bounty, man. Um, billion berry bounty. I don't know if I'd be able to purchase some other flame from York for that, because like, she trades. She's trading that for like celestial dragon status. You know, like she's got bigger aspirations than just some cash. Soul Killer says you think you could kill Vegapunk? No, Vegapunk's got too many defenses. Really, like, the Straw Hats are one of the few groups of characters that could realistically be killed, just because we, we know so much information about them, you know? And they're written to be goofy characters with, like, all sorts of little, you know, flaws and little weaknesses and little gags and blind spots and stuff like that. Talos says, Morge, check the Straw Hat future images, remember from Oda? Um, what am I checking that for? I know what they look like in the future, but what's the, what's the, can you tell me the, the purpose? We can pull them up just to take a look again. Here we go. This is the East Blue group. This is in the scenario where everything goes right for them, you know. Can I kill Blackbeard? Blackbeard is killable. Blackbeard is killable because he just gets hit by a lot. Like, he's very... His guard is down... His guard is down 95% of the time. I think I could kill Blackbeard, but I would need a bit of time to think about it. Because, like, he's not as dumb... He's not dumb like Luffy. He's just vulnerable. Like, you couldn't just, you can't just hand him a cherry pie and he'll just eat it right away. He's not that dumb. Sleeping Danger says, we know their sleep schedules, we can get them all to sleep. No, because it's like, somebody's going to be art on guard on the ship and stuff like that. The idea is not to just, like, just killing them when they sleep. That's not the same thing. You know? <laughs> like, imagine... Killing people when they sleep is never what people are talking about when it's like, oh, could you beat these characters with prep time? It's like, all right. <laughs> Imagine if it's like, like you know, that Justice League, um, you know, the, the Justice League comic where, like, Batman's plans are leaked, and so the entire Justice League gets taken out because of Batman's contingency plans on them. Imagine if those plans for each one of them was like, all right, kill Flash when he sleeps. Wonder Woman, kill her when she sleeps. Green Lantern, find him and kill him when he is sleeping. And it's just all variations of that. It's like, they're reading these plans. They're like, all right, we, we put a lot of effort into... Riaz al Ghul is reading those plans, and he's like, I put a lot of effort into stealing this shit from Batman. Let's find out what the world's most strategic mind has been working on. Learning the weaknesses of his fellow colleagues over the years. What has he concocted as the fail-safe solution? Oh, I just sneak into their bedrooms at night, like, uh, like, 
come down the chimney like Santa Claus or some shit, sneak into their bedrooms and then just, just kill the Flash while he sleeps. Find Superman while he's sleeping, use kryptonite and kill him. Genius. So we're not going to do that. Grimes, thanks for the five. Fun fact, Nami times Luffy is the most popular heterosexual sh uh, ship in One Piece. And this is your first super on a live stream, so thanks for supering to let us know that Nami and Luffy is the most popular heterosexual ship in One Piece. For some reason, I thought that Luffy and Hancock had a lot of uh, a hardcore fan base. So I don't know if that's more popular than Luffy and Nami, but let me, let me ask you guys. I feel like it depends on, like, it might be the fact that we haven't had a Luffy-Hancock interaction in a long time. I think Luffy Hancock took a lot of, like, it really took off early on because it was the first time that I think that there was a prominent feat, like, when it was, when Marine Ford, Amazon Lily, Impel Down, Marine Ford was going on, I think the Luffy Hancock stuff really took off right then because it was the first time that you had a really prominent female character in the story who was just head over heels infatuated with Luffy just like blatantly she's in love with Luffy she's obsessed with him every time she's on screen she's talking about loving Luffy like how she's in love with Luffy um so when you've got a character who for the next 80-ish chapters her entire personality essentially be becomes <laughs> like shipping herself with Luffy and you know she's obviously written to be like drawn to be the the apparently the hottest character in One Piece um, even though most of their designs are fairly similar. Supposedly, her, she's just way more... <laughs> Supposedly, there's just something phenomenally more beautiful about Hancock's design than, like, Robin's design that makes... I don't know. But, you know, most beautiful woman in the world. Her entire personality becomes being obsessed with the main character. That's all she talks about anytime she's on screen for the next... for the entire rest of the saga. She's in the saga fairly frequently. And she's a prominent character in the story. It makes sense why that ship kind of just took off. Because you never had any sort of actual romantic indication between, like, Luffy and Nami. Um, but we haven't seen, Luffy, like, Luffy and Boa interact in 600 chapters. So, probably went down a little bit. Let me ask. If Luffy were to get a real romantic interest... Uh... Okay, I'll just say which ship is actually... Uh, let's do this. I'll throw in Luffy Vivi just for variety's sake. I don't think there's any other person that's commonly suggested for Luffy than that. Uh... I'll throw a nun as well just to see. I should I should not have thrown a nun. I shouldn't have thrown a nun. I I did just want to see Luffy and Nami, Luffy Hancock. I shouldn't have thrown a nun. Um That wasn't a good idea. Grimes, thanks for the two. In the West, Luffy Bow is popular, but not in Japan. Hmm. I wonder what makes certain things more popular in Japan, but not in, in the West. Like I know in Japan I think I understand certain parts, like Chopper in Japan is very, very popular because you know, the chibi stuff, very cutesy, etc., kawaii. Um, but I, there's other things that have always struck me as odd. I can't think of them just right off the top of my head. But you know what's interesting, though? There was that poll that came out. So, some time back, um, Japanese readers, Japanese One Piece fans vote on best arc. And they did it by age group. They did it by age group. Um, like, hold on. I don't know if I can find this. They did it by age group. I think it was while they were also doing the most popular global popularity poll thing. Nah, I think it might have been different. Um, but the common arcs that were voted most popular there were also the ones that you see most popular in the West, like, uh, Marine Ford, any Slobby. Among the older generation, Alabasta was voted the most popular arc. Like, the oldest generation voted Alabasta. So, it's interesting to see. Okay, so Luffy Hancock is winning. 
Okay, so Luffy Hancock's still more more, more likely to, to Western people, it seems, confirmed than Luffy Nami, I guess. Um, I should not have included none. It just screws up the poll. But I'm not going to run it again. <clears throat> Oh, was I supposed to throw in Yamato? I don't think Yamato was ever a romantic interest for Luffy. All right, guys. We don't know what Jinbei's doing. Swimming and shit. Probably. Um, it seems, I guess, kind of realistic, right? Let's say Luffy's a wash, right? We don't know what happens with Luffy. I think if Luffy... If the crew splits up, I just don't see Luffy... Like, he needs to be out and about adventuring. I can't see him sitting still somewhere. So it's like... I feel like if the crew splits, then Luffy has to die. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no other place for him to be. There's nothing else for him to be doing. He can't sail by himself. He's not going to get a different crew. Um, if the crew splits, then I feel like Luffy dies. So either everyone stays together and they sail indefinitely, maybe to space, who knows. Or Luffy executed, crew splits, and then I think these are the most likely things. I think Zoro's a wanderer. I think that fits. Um, with no real agenda. Uh, just being the world's strongest swordsman. I do think Nami is she's a she's a settler. I don't think she's got some big agenda, something simple like a tangerine farm. Taking in some kids, I could see that. I don't see her taking like making like a whole orphanage or something. But yeah, maybe she adopts a kid, a kid or two like Bellamere did. Um, Usopp. I think Usopp dies personally, but I would also love to see him reunite with Kaya. Kaya, honestly, is the thing that makes Usopp's death the least likely to me. Like, that's the strongest point against it. Um, but I do have a theory as to how Usopp could meet Kaya again without, um, while the death still happens. Which would be, I personally have always thought that, like, the Straw Hats hit the end of the Grand Line, destroy Reverse Mountain, because I believe in the destruction of the two, two points. And then you need to get back to the new world. Like, you need to get back to Marijua, so it's equidistant from either way. So I always felt like they would go back through Paradise, um, likely reuniting with friends probably through East, Blue, and Paradise, basically, over the course of that. And that's when I feel like Usopp could meet Kai again on their way to the Final War and then get some closure there or something and then potentially die as the Final War begins. That's my thought. But, um, you know, maybe Usopp doesn't die. Maybe he just gets to go home to marry Kai. Um... Would Usopp want to keep adventuring then? I hope he's not like a deadbeat dad like Yasop. If he marries Kai, I hope he settles down. Sanji with the the all blue restaurant, great idea. This is one of my favorites. I love that. Just the idea of Sanji as this old badass chef running the best restaurant in the world. And like <laughs> he can beat up pretty much any character that walks into the restaurant. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, Chopper, I like Chopper and Zoe. I think he'd be happiest in Zoe, personally. Drum Kingdom is just going back to his hometown, back to his mom, parental figure, whatever, but, like, Zoe feels like he's an adult, that's his place, he's treated like a king there, he's a celebrity there, and the walking hospital idea, that's a nice extra touch from, I forget who said it exactly in stream, but someone, one of you guys said it. Robin, this is great to me, reopening a library and spreading knowledge, I think that's fantastic. She could do some more archaeological digging, but I think spreading knowledge would be even better. And then, yeah, Frankie being a shipwright again and helping turn Water 7 into a boat. I really like that. Brooke is happy with Laboon. Jinbei, I think there's no clear thing because Fishman Island won't exist anymore. I mean, it would exist, but just no one would want to live there because they hate living in Fishman Island, basically. Like, that's the whole point of the Fishman Island arc. They want to leave Fishman Island. So maybe Jinbei is a diplomat of sorts. I don't know. Isn't the elephant going to die, though? Yeah, maybe the elephant dies. If Either way, he can go back to whatever the new land of the Minx is. I wouldn't be surprised if the Minx end up living in Wano. I don't know. Okay, guys. Um, I think we've got some good, good ending storylines for everybody here. Let me make sure I'm not missing any supers. Um... Don't think I'm missing any supers. I think I'm good. I think I got everything. All right. All right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. 
we might do another one of the <laughs> who I could kill <laughs> in One Piece uh, type uh, streams. But uh, I think the next stream I was planning on doing. Okay, so heads up. Next week, I'll be in Malaysia. I'm still going to stream whenever the next chapter comes out. I will try and stream next Monday. It's going to depend on how I'm feeling uh, jet lag wise, time zone wise. Maybe it gets bumped to like next Tuesday or something. I don't know. We'll see time zone wise if I can make it work. Um, the tricky thing is I don't know with internet there. I think the internet should be good. It might be difficult to do screen sharing. I don't know. We're going to find out. So we'll see when I'm in uh, Malaysia. Uh, but we should be able to do streams next week. And um, I want to do best manga chapters of 2023, but I guess we kind of have to wait till the final chapter of, of One Piece for 2023 comes out. So, yeah, um, we'll, we'll find out what's happening next Monday. But thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I will talk to you all later. Peace.